Welcome back, friends, to another episode of the Zephcast, the show where we get to know your favorite content creators, streamers, and podcasters alike. I'm your host, Zephyrs XP, and with me today is my amazing friend, Lolly Lichen. How are you doing today, Hello. Lolly? Hi. Doing great. How are you? I am doing super, super awesome. Um, thank you seriously so much for taking time out of your day to hang out, to chat, um, just kind of getting a chance to l know a little bit more about you, person behind Lolly Lichen, everything. Um, I'm really excited to just chat and just kind of see where our conversations take us. Of course. Thank you for having me. It's super sweet of you. First question I've been dying to ask. So icebreaker okay. question, what is your karaoke song of choice oh no oh yes <laughs> um probably crazy he calls me crazy he calls me i don't know if i know that one um i don't remember who does it i don't think it's billy holiday but um it's definitely featured in fallout if you've played that before I think I played Fallout 3, like a little bit of it, like maybe the first hour or two. That's the one where you, you start kind of like okay. underground, right? I believe so. Um, I never played it, but I was introduced to the soundtrack and um, <laughs> it is it is uh, amazing. The Galaxy News Radio is definitely something to check out if you haven't, I don't uh, think but it's I a whole bunch of like old timey songs. Oh, I, I, I love actually wifey and I literally last night, we found this playlist, um, called electro swing and it's like, <gasps> Oh my God. Yes. Yes. It's literally like the best thing ever. We were jamming for like six hours straight. It's like 1920s music in like today's <laughs> kind of style. Literally. Yes. The, so good. Kind of like that style. I absolutely love that stuff. Um, so if the song isn't like that at all, actually, it's very. <laughs> very chill and i was i was right it is billy holiday i looked up the lyrics <laughs> oh nice <laughs> <laughs> um but it's it's definitely like the old timey stuff without the electro added um but no i love electro swing what about you though what is your go-to karaoke song Ooh. um I guess. You can't ask me and expect <laughs> me not to ask you back i totally didn't even think about that actually i was like I, um i would say Oh, I mean, the first one that comes to mind, probably Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Cause I oh could, my God. <laughs> I can imagine the whole place singing along with it. Oh man. Yes. That song is it's, so It's jammy. an amazing song. It is. I wonder if that song was, I'm sure it was, but I wonder if it was as big and popular as it kind of as meme culture become before Wayne's World. Cause <laughs> Wayne's World kind of took it to like the stratosphere, you know? True, true. Um, I don't know. Dude, I haven't seen I haven't seen Wayne's World in so long. Have you? Have you I'm guessing you've seen Wayne's World, right? Such a long time ago. It's so good. Oh my! I don't think I've seen the second <laughs> one though. Have you seen the second one? I don't believe I have. Mm. We should have a we should have like a movie theater night. We should have like a movie watch party <laughs> night. Just do the Wayne's World movies. Um, we can start up uh, movie nights on Fridays again. Hell yeah! In, in the uh, in the Fireside Discord. <laughs> Shout out to the Fireside Discord. Um, I'll, I'll also, um, all social medias and everything for like Lolly and Fireside Discord, absolutely going to be linked down in the description below. So that is the place to hang out. That is the place to be. It is a pop in community. Um, I definitely do want to talk about Fireside coming up in a little bit, but I guess kind of just for sure. to really start off with who is Lolly Lycan, the streamer, person behind the streamer, who is Lolly Lycan? Oh man, this is like the worst part of anything for me, like talking about myself. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> We're tired. Um, well, so there's a little bit of a story behind, you know, Lolly like in the cat, the were cat. Um, I'm not sure if I am ready to share too, too much, but um, there, there's a little bit of stuff in the works to share, you know, like a whole story, a background, so to speak. Um, but I am a werecat. Sometimes I'm cat. Sometimes I'm person. Uh, definitely when I'm working with glue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> person. I am. Yep. I, I, I don't like getting, you know, glue in my fur. I don't think anybody would. The paws, so I bet. I'm an artist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gross. It's nasty. Blech. Um, so I'm an artist. 
Um, I do digital art. I started with traditional. I've been doodling since I was a teeny tiny kid. Um, I also do painting for miniatures, canvas, um, not too, too much though. And then I also was a band kid like you. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I played alto sax after playing years of clarinet, trying to convince them that I could play alto sax. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> and then um, I moved around, but uh, eventually that, uh, that love gave out for video games. I've been playing games since my thumbs could move. Uh, it's been kind of on and off, but I've mostly kept to MMOs. I have problems with putting down things that are highly addicting. <laughs> same, same. And we... otherwise, I mean, yeah. Too easy to binge stuff. Uh, I feel like stuff is so it easy. Is. Especially uh, like I'm sure we'll talk about Final Fantasy 14, but oh the, dear. <laughs> the, the other day, I, I think it was I think it was like Wednesday or or it was I think it was Wednesday. Like I literally got everything set up to start streaming. I get ready to go. I'm like lolly is streaming at like 6 30 in the morning something must have happened yep. with final fantasy <laughs> <laughs> yeah final fantasy 14 uh patch days are the only days that i will get up before like 10 a.m yeah um and then also coming up i believe later on in the year is actually um endwalker the new expansion which i do believe i'm i might be doing a 24 hour to 48 hour stream Oh, of, of doing that. <laughs> um, have they announced like a like an end date to Final Fantasy 14 when they're going to stop or is it just um, keep they're keep going? So kind of um, there's going to be an end to this current story, which is going to be Endwalker. Um, from what I understood, they're going to be ending this current arc with the release of Endwalker and then following patches are actually going to be leading up to a new story. Very interesting. I, I've mm -hmm. ne I've never I know I know we've talked about it before. I've never played Final Fantasy 14, but like if there's one single MMO I feel like would suck me in, it would it would probably be that one. It's 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 I've, worth it, man. Yeah. I've I've watched you play a lot. I've watched Chief Little Paw play a lot. <laughs> um I've watched Ice Beams play a lot of World of Warcraft, like quite recently in the mm -hmm. past few weeks. Is it pretty it's it's pretty similar to that, like same kind of core, mm -hmm. right? but somewhat the so hmm, how do I put it? I because okay don't get me wrong I really love WoW mm -hmm. um I have had an account since 2007 <laughs> but um it's not very friendly to new players whereas Final Fantasy 14 is actually very friendly to new players and it's yeah. a little bit handholdy sometimes mm. um the story is a lot more linear as well. Um, it's a lot easier to understand as long as you're not skipping the cutscenes. Don't skip the cutscenes. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, like Final Fantasy XIV is way more of a single player experience as opposed to WoW, where you would probably want to go and group up with people and, you know, do a whole bunch of things together. Is it pretty much like the story? Like the whole game is mostly single player except for the big raids, right? Like Shiva and yeah. like I, I think I've seen Shiva and, and Rama, maybe? Yeah, I believe you watched our last raid tier, which was um there was there was definitely Ifrit and Garuda. Yes, Ifrit. Uh yes. Ramu and uh and Shiva. And then there was a third fight during that uh in that tier that I don't remember at all. <laughs> Have they done Bahamut yet as one? Um, yes, actually. Oh. Bahamut was in A Realm Reborn years and years ago. Uh, I believe it was about six, I want to say five to six years ago. It was T13. Uh, the It was literally called the Binding Coil of Bahamut or something like that. Interesting. Um, so, so yeah, it, it was it was crazy. Is it pretty much like the story and then there's just like these side I don't know like kind of like side quests you know where it's like you can just go do the side quest and if you defeat the boss you get like a really good item or kind of kind of um so you'll have the main the main story and mm -hmm. also attached to the main story there are dungeons and trials so your dungeons are like your four-man group like 
know, you go in and you clear it within about 20 minutes, maybe. Mm. Um, trials are typically about 10 to 15 minute fights where you need a group of eight people. And that's where you find all the primals and stuff. So you've got Garuda, Ifrit, uh, Titan, Rama, everything. Um, the good ones? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then um, when you're done with the story and you're, you know, bored and you're looking for a bit of an, like a, a harder challenge, then you have the Savage tier um, and like the raiding content. But as you've seen with Chief and I, um, that is six hours a week of bashing your head against the wall until all eight of you figure it out. So some of those bosses look insane. Like it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So uh, it's um, it's all dancing basically. It's it's pattern memorizing really. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I, I think someone was saying that something's happening with the servers coming soon where all of them are just going to be <laughs> mashed into one mm -hmm. so i don't believe it's going to be mashed into one i have a feeling it's going to still be um like separated by uh the countries sort of uh yeah. or not countries but continents so gotcha. uh, north america um and then like europe and asia possibly having their own two like separate and um the oceanic servers so like australia and stuff um so i believe that they're all still kind of going to be split but we'll see um otherwise yeah all the server walls are pretty much coming down the same way that they did in wow are there multiple like servers in north america that are kind of like dividing mm -hmm. it up gotcha so when they all multiple, come down multiple multiple gotcha so like that that's going to be everyone just being able to play i mean probably everyone on the same continent right i imagine yeah. like latency. right now we have um it's awful sometimes but it's okay <laughs> um right now we have different data centers as well mm -hmm. as different servers on the different data centers and there are two data centers i believe primarily that um they have na split between okay so yeah i can't otherwise wait. yeah i can't wait to start playing 14. literally one like that's probably the very first game i'm gonna download when i get my pc <laughs> I'm super excited. That's fair. I just want to ride chocobos Honestly, all day. Like, Is that too much to ask? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you ever, if you end up like on my server or data center, um, if you ever need help with dungeons and trials and stuff, I uh, I have a lot of free time. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll probably ask before I do anything. I'll be like, what server are you and, and chief and everyone on? I'll join the same <laughs> one. Well, I guess it probably won't That's matter fair. too much coming soon. Um, yeah so i guess kind of like circling back on like the streaming side of things what mm -hmm. was the catalyst that kind of really got you interested in streaming so um the only reason i found out twitch existed i think was probably because of raid mm -hmm. um and the main person i believe that really uh like recorded our raid times was eternal jade paladin if you remember him he's yes. one of his oldest friends yeah, I met him through Final Fantasy XIV, and he did um, a lot of JRPGs and stuff. So after seeing that and eventually branching out and kind of seeing like a whole bunch of people doing art and um, doing real life stuff on there and some of the like really cool um, like GoPro streams where people are like going out like whitewater rafting yes. with their GoPros, absolutely wild. Um, but I looked at that kind of stuff and I was like, Oh, if there was anywhere that would embrace my eclectic variety of things that I'm interested in, well, I assumed that Twitch would be the place. Um, and then the pandemic hit and I finally had nothing else to do and it helped me create a schedule. Um, and it's kind of created some healthy habits, I suppose. I feel like a lot of people, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Just right when the pandemic hit, I think a lot of people who maybe wanted, like always had that thought, like, I want to start streaming, but when, or I want to do YouTube, yep. but when that was kind of the moment where it's like, <laughs> cause I saw a lot of people posting on Twitter around that time where it's like, I told myself if I had all the time in the world, I would get healthy or start learning to cook or learn a new language or start streaming on Twitch. And I mean, you either kind of did what you've wanted to do or didn't you know yeah that's true that's it's it's really cool talking to a lot of people who really got started right around that same time like i mean for all the craziness in the world at least 
having the free time to be able to dive into creative passions, I think is really going to be pretty monumental, you know, like a big moment in a lot of people's lives. So yeah, I, I started streaming right around pandemic and everything as well, like March time. So yeah. Yep. 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 It's been a, it's been a crazy ass year. It's been wild. <laughs> Um, I think it's been nine months for me and I can't count backwards right now because my brain is on meltdown. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, it's nine months already. Holy crap. Yeah. I, I like literally, I always find myself looking at the bottom of my computer and it's like, wow, 2021. I don't know. <laughs> it, maybe it's just getting older. Like every year, just time is flying by like faster than ever before. Um, I guess on the side of streaming, because I know you did start out using a face cam, right? Did I did it for like a week, I think. And there's still one clip, one single clip was saved and I've kept it up there kind of as a joke. Mm -hmm. um, because to me, like, you know, if somebody's really willing to go digging, like it's really not hard to find stuff on like who I am because I use the same username everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'll just, oh, puppy. Oh, hi, Ellie. Hello, puppy. She's giving all um, the love. But I figured, <laughs> She's so sweet. She is pretty cute. <laughs> Sorry. You're going to just leave it there. No, you're good. You're good. Don't even worry. The puppies. Uh, so cute. So I might have done a little bit of like deep dive research um, before podcast and everything started. I did see that <laughs> clip. Um, it was the cheerleader. <laughs> yep. So yeah. <laughs> I didn't even realize what I was saying until um, until after. And... It was actually just really funny because Transistor is actually like my absolute favorite game. Yeah. Um, well, not anymore. Shadowbringers had something to say about that. <laughs> but um, Transistor, I had never actually um, had that happen to me in the game before. So it was like, one, it's a funny clip because holy crap, I didn't realize that that was even possible. And two, <laughs> well, my filthy mouth <laughs> without even you know trying degenerates right <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much that's that's our tag um for a reason <laughs> i mean I, I mean nsfw right that's why it's 18 yep. plus um i actually Always. i saw that clip and just started cracking my ass off like like an hour <laughs> and a half ago it, honestly watching that game watching transistor it looked i totally saw hades in it um yeah. I never played Hades before, never played Transistor before, but I was like the whole time, I mean, for the 10 seconds I was watching, I'm like, that looks a lot like Hades. It's the same company. It's the it's the same um, indie company that, uh, that's been working on it. And they have been my, well, my favorite developers, uh, my favorite creators for years now. It's It's been super, a long time. Super giant, right? Yep, super giant games. They are amazing. What was the other um, one they did? But no, Pyro? Pyre. Pyre. That so was... they started with Bastion um, and then they created Transistor. I got Transistor for free on PlayStation Plus. Um, and I was in a really like rough spot in my life and I played through that and oh, my heart. <laughs> so um, there's also a thing between Transistor and Bastion actually where a lot of people believe that Bastion is actually the uh, sequel to Transistor. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Which, but Bastion so, came out first? Yep. That I'm not going to go too, too much into it because okay. I want you to play these eventually. <laughs> I'm, I'm very um, intrigued, honestly. And then they came out with Pyre, which is basically Wizards Basketball. Um, <laughs> it's it's a great, um, a great game, great story and an amazing soundtrack. Um, and then Hades, they're finally getting the rep and the love that they deserved from like time. Yeah. With Hades coming out because it, it's a much more like popular game style. Oh, it's beautiful. Like, like I, watching it, I'm like, I have no idea what is going on, but the music is amazing. The graphics are amazing. The voice acting is yeah. like actually like really 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 good i'm like i, I just big, I, big props to logan cunningham Mwah. yeah the, it, it was like it looks like a killer game and I'm, I'm such a sucker for like greek mythology and like god of war stuff totally <laughs> speaks to me so i'm like definitely want to give it a shot one day do you think 
Final Fantasy 14, you and like is your more favorite game over Hades? Absolutely. Oh yeah. It's Final just Fantasy that one. 14. Yeah. After after the um the Shadowbringers expansion. Because I've spent over ten thousand hours on Final Fantasy 14 over the last six to seven years. Holy um, crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just drop that. You know. right. Um but <laughs> legitimately, um the the storytelling of Shadowbringers the way that it brought everything together, the amount of my life that I've put towards this game, it would be silly if it wasn't my favorite. You know, but, I, um, or sorry, it's, it's just, oh man, no, I, I can go on about final fantasy 14 forever. Just stop me now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really feel like video games, you know, at least with kind of like our age generation, like we're, we've grown up with video games and understand kind of what they are, but no, video games kind of feel like that middle ground between the in-depthness of a book, but like the cinematicness yeah. of a movie, but you get to control all of it. Like you might not get to write the story, <laughs> but you get to control the pacing and, and everything. And, and man, video games, especially MMOs, like watching WoW, Final Fantasy 14, I, I can immediately see why people could just lose themselves in this whole world and just, oh yeah, I, I'm very intrigued. Absolutely. I think one of my favorite things about video games in general, um, and that goes for MMOs, that goes for sandboxes, um, survival craft games, is that even though they already have a story, you can fully input your own. Yeah. Um, like there's uh, the whole SMP craze going on about Minecraft right now, um, where there's a whole bunch of people that are literally creating their own worlds within a world. And yes. it's amazing. It's, it's, it's so crazy. It's just like, you know, modding communities they put so much work in to you know fit into this like little space that somebody else has created and it's just mind-blowing it totally is like people are it, it, i feel i feel kind of the same way with like speed running games it's like it's a game <laughs> within a game like you're using the game as the foundation and then building kind of your own thing i mean obviously they're two totally different things but like oh yeah minecraft is super cool to watch people have built like the death star the empire state yep. building like the eiffel tower i'm like man humans are so <laughs> damn creative like sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit you know <laughs> sure for sure um i guess kind of on that as well like with so would you is the terminology for it called vtubing v, like being a vtuber i believe so because i know poppy always says like vtubing and i just want to make sure i'm like 100 mm -hmm. percent correct on it um so why did you choose being a cat Out do you want curiosity. the honest answer i do want the honest <laughs> answer um okay so I have this thing where if I see my own face on the screen, I have to look at it. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, it's like a magnetism thing. Like I just, and I, I, I hate it because I don't, I, I tend to look at myself and be like, I don't really like looking at that. <laughs> but then my eyes just keep going back. So being the cat, I don't have to deal with that pressure. Also, it's kind of like, um, Oh, what was it? There was a study about um, the issues actually around the pandemic, because we had been speaking about that earlier, um, where spending so much time on the computer with, you know, a human's face right in your face, it actually triggers your like fight or flight and stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and I already have enough issues with that as it is um, due to, you know, life circumstances. Um, like when oh, we see me, ourselves or see other humans? Mostly others, mostly others. Um, but for some people where they, you know, maybe don't look in a mirror very frequently, like uh, in the morning, like I'll completely avoid my mirror going to the bathroom and stuff like that. I just, I just don't look at it. It's never really interested me. So when I like, I hop onto the computer and I've got like a webcam cam on or something like that. I'm like, who is that? Who is that? <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. So it kind of creates a similar um, effect for me. And it's not necessarily terrible. Like I, I can live with it, but I don't want to catch myself like staring off into space and in, like the middle of a stream. So it's just more comfortable. You know, it took me so long with I, I've never, ever, ever, ever been like a selfie person because 
I just have never been a selfie person, but I've been trying to take <laughs> more selfies for like Twitter before stream, kind of the social media thing to do, you know? And oh yeah, it took me forever to like not look at the phone, but like look at the camera. And yep. yeah, you're just kind of like, your eyes just always want to like look over at yourself. Um, even like with doing this, I'm like <laughs> trying to like block myself out and just like not even look at all. Um, I took my glasses off. <laughs> there you go. Straight up. I, I have I have an advantage here. I just take my glasses off and I can see shapes. <laughs> it's like somewhere around this vicinity is where I should be looking. Exactly. Um, exactly. The crown, by the way, is like always the best part. The crown is so good. Oh, I love you. the crown. Um, my favorite thing is like watching your streams with Layla because no joke, she goes like, batshit crazy just under the tv just like barking and whining and i'm like layla please stop so cute so oh, i love your dogs so much they're all so sweet they're ridiculous they're so cute they're so you know i was actually thinking today and i haven't told wifey or told anybody really i was just thinking about it i was like I might think about redoing my emotes and making them like golden retrievers Ooh. inspired instead of I don't know, like Final Fantasy, like I love Final Fantasy, but sometimes I'm like, I feel like it's kind of a little niched. Whereas like somebody yeah. popping in be like, I don't know what these emotes are, but I guess they're kind of cute. But I'm like, everybody likes <laughs> the Goldens. Like they're pretty cute. And I don't know. Of course. To totally okay. over their thought. <laughs> um, on an honest opinion on that though. Yes. Because I'll give it. Give it. Okay. So in the event of something unfortunate happening, to them um the the kind of like mental health effect that it'll have on you and your channel is awful um one of one of my friends is actually currently going and every single emote was made after that sweet baby's honor um and you know it, it can be a very expensive thing right um to have to go back and replace all of those not even considering the emotional um effect that it would have on you and even the viewers um it'll already be bad enough but then when you have your entire channel centered around it ow you totally you have know? a point actually i didn't even think about that but I do you have i do have a suggestion hmm? i'm i'm all ears goldie cerberus the goldie cerberus just has to happen man <laughs> i i've i've been meaning so I have been meaning to get it done. Um, I actually did get one made. Um, I, I didn't, hmm, I didn't want to, I don't know. It wasn't quite what I was thinking, but I do want to get one made. Absolutely. Kind of like a, a Cerberus style <laughs> of all three goldens. Um, yeah. I, it's I, such a rare occurrence that we get it on stream, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, and everybody always freaks out when like one pops up. They're like, <laughs> oh, cute dog. Oh, a second one. Oh my God, there's two. And it's like, everyone's like, oh no, no, no. There's three. And I just wait for Ellie. She's coming. <laughs> she is. She's snoozing over there. I think she's napping. She's just chilling to Sweet herself. Baby. She always does. Um. I honestly think with VTubing, I had no idea what it was until like I started streaming on Twitch. And mm -hmm. I really think it's gonna like even explode bigger than it currently is. I, I honestly see, I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of people maybe in like five years or so kind of opt for going like the VTubing <laughs> route. Cause you can literally be anything. And that's what's so Absolutely. cool. You can be a, a cat. You can be Poppy Fubar. Shout out to the legend. Um, <laughs> you could be. You could be an alien. You could be anything. And it's it's so creative. Absolutely. I feel like with streaming, and um, I feel like it also it, it it adds a little bit of like security as well. Um, where a lot of people can be very uncomfortable with the possibility that somebody might recognize them on the street. And I feel like a lot of people are recognizing um, kind of the really, really bad atmosphere around famous people um, and their private lives, right? So yeah. this VTubing aspect actually kind of adds a lot of anonymity to it. That's so true. That is 100% true. Um, yeah, I, I, I have you had, have you told anybody like close family and friends that you've that you do streaming? 
family. <laughs> no, I um I don't really talk to my family much. Um, my grandfather, he uh, he definitely knows that I've been streaming, but he's kind of you know he, he's not with the times. He's like, what? What is Twitch? What is, what is streaming? What do you mean? How do you, you just do, playing young your kids? video games all day? Exactly. <laughs> um, but I love my grandfather. He is also um, just an amazing artist. Uh, he's also like a a mechanic. He's amazing. Hmm. He's awesome. Has Thalion told anyone like really close to him? Oh, that that he streams. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of his family already knew that he did like YouTube content. Mm -hmm. So I think that it was if he has, it's probably just like a really easy thing for you know him to just be like, yeah, I started streaming. They're like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> you did YouTube. I kind of assumed streaming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have not told a single person in my life that I do anything streaming wise or, or, or anything. Um, I have a, my wife's coworker actually, I, um, I've known her for a long time. She's a really good friend. She randomly followed me on Instagram and was like, what is this account that he's doing? And, and like, why does he have oh a my. different name? And what is this thing about Twitch? So she might, she kind of does know, but like, I don't know how to bring it up. Like, I don't, I don't know. Cause I feel like when you think of streaming, so many people just think, oh, you're literally just playing video games and that's all you do. Yeah. And it's like, no, I mean, vi video games can be an aspect of it, but like, honestly, my favorite streams on Twitch being hundred percent honest are like your art streams, crises, art streams, <laughs> Zach's cooking streams, the like IRL streams, the, I don't want to say anything but video games, but kind of. I don't know, just really creative stuff, you know? Yeah, a lot of like the video game content tends to be very recycled because it's, you know, like I said earlier, like it's somebody else's story that everybody else is just playing over and over again. Right? Yeah. So that's part of the reason that I think that I do so well with survival craft games um, and that a lot of people like to come and, you know, watch those is because it may have like a very slight story, if any at all, but it's a lot of like our creations and what we're doing with the game. Um, so like in, in Ark, uh, because we have the community server going for that, um, I'm building a literal mansion <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> from scratch. And like, it's it's all coming from my brain. And it, you know, it's not something that like anybody else would have like an exact replica of. So people will watch to see like, oh, what's gonna come of this? Or even just looking for like techniques um and like tricks so kind of that's, like that's one of the reasons that i love that stuff kind of like with with what we were talking about earlier like with minecraft or even like um like animal crossing mm -hmm. like wifey oh my god like i've lost i've completely lost my wife to this <laughs> game called animal crossing um we waited for a year for her to start it <laughs> right i think we literally unboxed it on stream like uh, unwrapped the plastic and everything like a month ago and but yeah yep. she's she she's very similar she really really enjoys the like it's the same world as everybody else's world but it, your island is so unique and your own and you can do whatever you want with it and there's you are kind of yeah building your story out individually yeah absolutely it's Every, especially in Animal Crossing, especially in Animal Crossing, every single island is like a fingerprint. Yeah, that's a great term for it. That is such a great term that's, for uh, it. That's what sandboxes are to me. It's, it's you know, where you're going to leave your little fingerprint. Yeah. So. <laughs> I want to, I definitely want to try. I definitely want to try Minecraft um, and Valheim. Have you, have you played Valheim at all? Yeah, so I played um, a few hours of it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Um, they're doing really well for an alpha, but they, they have some work to do. Um, <laughs> there were some things that made me a little um, cranky. <laughs> um, but but I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled. I played, you know, things like Ark and Minecraft with like all these mods and everything. So Valheim is still very new and I enjoyed what I got out of it so far. And I'm really looking forward to what they come out with next. Is, would Stardew Valley be kind of in the same realm of games? Somewhat, somewhat, because you can design your farm, you can decorate it, and um, there's actually little maps for all of the areas of the town 
-hmm. that will show you where you can and can't place things. And you can actually design the town a little bit too. Interesting. I, I love I love mm. the Stardew streams. Stardew streams are like the chillest streams on Twitch, <laughs> and they're 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 some of the best. Um, so one question I've really kind of have been wanting to ask because um we're both part of the Fireside Community Discord. Um, mm -hmm. what was kind of the inspiration behind getting the whole Discord together? Kind of getting it started. Um, I I know, I believe on my end you kind of had already ha had already. Ha Ugh, I can't talk had everything already <laughs> going and then kind of was was like Seth you want to be a part of it I'm like oh I would absolutely love to be a part of it um but like where did the initial spark come from because I believe you and Ziada kind of like the masterminds of it would that be fair to say <laughs> kind of kind of um and then we also got a fair bit from Chief as well so Chief. Z Chief and I had hopped in the discord um we started putting together some you know generic um channels and stuff like that and then um they looked at me and went so who are we inviting <laughs> and um originally i don't know if you remember i had reached out to the entire mod squad and everything um talking about possibly making like a joint discord so yeah, yeah so that's what happened um we created the bare bones and we kind of uh, looked for a little bit of input on what people would like to see in the Discord, and then I just invited everybody that I thought would be a good fit. <laughs> and obviously you were on that list, so we brought in just a whole bunch of people, and we figured, you know, we have a lot of viewer overlap at that time, and we've all grown so much since then, and whether that means that, you know, the Discord was a success or it's just us being awesome people, <laughs> You know, <laughs> either way to me, it's working. Honestly, I, I was checking, I think my Twitch summary or something a couple days ago, and it still said mm -hmm. that I think it was you, Ziada, Fortune, Ryman, I think Zach, I think at least on my end of my channel, I had the most viewer overlap. So I would definitely say it's been <laughs> an absolute success. Um, I'm really, really, really excited to, to have our, our like, moderator meeting tomorrow that we've kind of been planning yeah. out for um i i have i've been taking a lot of notes a lot of things that i am super excited to talk with everybody about um awesome dude i, I think the fireside community discord i really have a feeling like this is just the beginning for it and i think it's gonna grow massive i have i'm super excited for it honestly <laughs> for sure i think we're actually uh if we haven't hit it already i think we're going on 200 members already as well yeah yeah and it's it's extremely active and everything but um i know i'm i'm really looking forward to having our meeting tomorrow night i'm trying to kind of create a bit of a script for myself so that i don't <laughs> derail myself and and go a little crazy um but yeah no i'm i'm really hyped and i look forward to hearing everybody's feedback and hopefully hopefully going forward uh implementing a lot of awesome changes yes that will uh the, you know make everybody everybody happy and make it a lot easier for everybody to use i completely agree i guess I'm, I'm most worried about not worried but like i know how humans can be and you know i yes. hope i hope there's oh i just i feel like the worst thing that could happen is like 10 of us are so excited about something and two people are like that's the stupidest idea ever and then everyone's like <laughs> um yeah, but I'm really okay, so so I have this wonderful button, right? It's called <laughs> mute. Oh, it's called server mute. <laughs> Don't make me use um, it. <laughs> there's also actually um, a new discord function called like a, a town hall function. Yes. And I want to test it before it happens. I want to see if we're able to move people in and out so that um, if you recall, I was going to talk about or I was talking about having people have like a set amount of time where they can kind of, you know, bust out what they need to say and then switch so that I make sure that absolutely everybody's voice is heard. <laughs> so I want to see if this town hall um, function can actually switch people in and out of the actual active speaker role. That, so we'll, we'll see. It's going to be fun. I think that's going to be really cool, honestly. Kind of, I, I totally think that's what it could be used for because I, I was thinking the exact same thing. I've kind of been like doing a little bit of research into it as well. <laughs> and it'd be cool to have like, 
I don't, I don't want to say a host, but maybe like a main person to like call people up mm -hmm. just to maybe ask questions or kind of help lead the conversation for, yeah, 10, 20, 30 minutes or whatever. And then they just kind of go back Absolutely. and yeah, I, I actually, That's the plan. I actually secretly hope that we do this. If we did it once a month, I would be really excited about that because we haven't oh, really, God, I wish. I, and I know it's hard getting like, cause, cause is it just the like 10, 11 of the streamers or is it the entire mod yeah. group, everybody? So it's uh, the 11 of us. Um, if you know, the people that mod for us want to join in, they're more than welcome to. Gotcha, um, gotcha. and if anybody like, you know, had specific concerns, then they'd be more than welcome to share them. Um, the only thing is like, we have. Time so limit. many people in so many different time zones and it's like a little bit of a time limit because i know that for some of us it's going to be really late like for me i believe it's 10 p.m or something when we start carrie and it's like 11 a.m for her you know <laughs> right so it's it's crazy but it also took us like a month to be able to all be ready for this <laughs> and actually get the time so it's Oh, I wish I could make them monthly. And if we want to do something more frequent, we could probably do it in smaller groups. Yeah. You know, I think it's going to be really good too to kind of see what, I mean, if we really are serious about making Fireside like a big, big, big Discord, I think it's going to be a good learning point for us tomorrow, kind of uncovering, you know, especially I'm sure like you and Chief and Ziata is kind of like the masterminds behind everything, kind of gauging how to steer the boat, you know, like, how are we going to handle sure. the mods, the streamers, where are we going to move everything? So it's going to be cool. Almost every single day. I'm thinking about this discord. I spend <laughs> so much time in it. Yeah. I, I would say, I mean, at the end of the day, we're just all friends here to hang out. And, you know, I feel like the more, <laughs> I feel like the more you kind of focus on any kind of the numbers or anything, I mean, discord wise, Twitch wise, just anything in life wise, like it's so easy to get lost in the numbers, you know? Absolutely. I ignore numbers entirely. Yeah. Um, for me, when it comes to like, whether it's Twitch or it's the discord or like literally anything, mm -hmm. um, I tend to look at it as, you know, are people able to access things? Are people, you know, finding this easy to use things like that? And that comes from partially my um, my education as an interior design tech. Um, we had a lot of focus on accessibility um, from all like all standpoints. Then um, just my general like I guess upbringing and things like that. The the issues, the obstacles that I've come across. Um, I like to make things as simple and smooth as possible. I I think that yeah. I think simplicity and ease of use is literally one of the most understated things in the entire <laughs> world. Like the easier it is for somebody to just turn something on and just go is, yep. is so, um, yeah, I, 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 that is really, really awesome to hear. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to hear that. Um, I guess kind of one thing, I guess kind of steering back more on the like streaming <laughs> side of questions. I have a whole a list of like questions in front of me and I, I want to make sure I get to some of the really good ones. Um, of one, course. Question, one question I have been asking a couple others that I'm like always really fascinated to kind of hear um, the, the answer from is with your time that you've been streaming on Twitch, what has mm -hmm. been some of the biggest highlight moments for you since streaming? Biggest highlight moments. I think that of like of literally every moment that has ever occurred for me on Twitch easily easily the Christmas stream December 23rd yes. that 13 hour stream was absolutely wild that was oh my goodness um, and not that numbers matter but the most hilarious thing because I remember you were joking about it and quite a few other people were joking about it uh, everybody was like, let's get Lolly, you know, like a hundred viewers. Yeah. You I know? think we did hit a hundred viewers. We didn't. We didn't. <gasps> you know what we did hit? Oh no, what was it? Is it like 90? 90? 99! No! <laughs> Oh, no. I even posted a picture, but it was the it was the most hilarious thing that had ever happened. <laughs> um but no, that that stream was amazing. The the amount of people that showed up, the amount of people that, you know joined in for the party games and everything it was just the the support 
for each other, you know, was, it was just overwhelming. That, and there were a lot of tears. <laughs> that was a wild stream. Um, is that the, is that the most viewers I've ever had was 99? Yep. Yeah. That is absolutely the most. And it's just, it's hilarious. I, it, I love it. Isn't it crazy how different it kind of is streaming for, I feel like everybody always wants like as much like the biggest numbers possible 100 viewers a thousand viewers whatever but like there really is a difference <laughs> of stream from like 20 viewers to like 50 viewers like it's totally different yeah. and then 50 to 100 is like massively different like these people with 100 viewers I, like not gonna name drop too much but like literally poppy foobar <laughs> one of my favorite human beings in the world like going into his channel and just seeing the chat going and he's just keeping up with everything i'm like dude absolutely how do you do that he's how he's come a long way from you know when i had first met him and everything and even before then he had come an even longer way he's literally poured his heart and soul into his channel and i like i believe it shows oh, you know a thousand percent of literally like I would say Poppy Food Bar is probably my most talked about. Like, I I I, I love talking <laughs> about Poppy Food Bar, and and I hope to have him on the on the podcast sometime soon. Um, but yeah, like the amount of attention to detail he has in his art, in his entire mm -hmm. production mm -hmm. setup, in in the way everything flows together, in his his character, it, it's just all ten out of ten, and it really is absolutely. like absolutely. It's so inspiring, you know, that people can be that creative with something as simple as just streaming like some people literally just have just the game and they go live and then other people put on these like massive shows of just creativity <laughs> and and it's just like how do you do this it's insane <laughs> he is an entertainer yeah and i honestly feel the exact same way about you like i i I love like your, your character, the background, um, the art streams you do, the whole layout and everything for them. Like it's, it's, it, I'm sure it's probably just nothing to you or, or just kind of like, it's just another day, but like, I think it's really cool. Honestly, I really, really, really do. I think the creativity is so amazing, Lolly. Oh, thank you. But no, I absolutely bust my ass. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, all of my art, um, my overlays and stuff like that, I, I make them myself. I cook them all up in my little noggin. Um, all of the all of the animations, um, well, not all of them. Some of them are obviously assets, like free assets and things like that that I've put together. Um, but any of the like the character animations and stuff like that that I've been working on, there was one previously that I think you saw. Um, it was the uh, that like sitting wolf girl that was like crisscross applesauce with oh, the, yes. the controller in her hand. Yeah, I made that um, from scratch. I did that entire animation. Um, and I've also done, you know, some overlays for other people. I've been working on my own emotes and mm. nah, I, it's it's a lot of work. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Like like the way some people have talked to me about like music, like, oh, it's, it's so cool that you can just pick up something and start playing something. I feel that exact same way for artists. I'm like, you can just pick up a pen and paper or an iPad or pencil or whatever. And just art comes out. Like, I wish I had that. Yep. I wish I had that talent. Honestly, it's, it's incredible. Um, yeah, the, the art streams from you and crises are seriously like two of my most, every time I, I'm like, Oh, they're doing an art stream. I'm hopping in. They're my favorite. Yep. Um, I guess when we're talking about like the highlight moments of streaming on Conversely, on the opposite side, what have been some of the most challenging and frustrating moments you've encountered since you started mm. streaming? I think there, there might have been two. I think I think I'd I'd list two. So my absolute first stream was horrible. Um and it's not because, you know, the stream quality was bad or nobody showed up, because people did show up. I had a few, I had a few people hanging out. Um but I was so anxious yeah. to the point that like I, I my my armpits they were they were like pools. And um I was so shaky and everything. It was it was really funny. Um <laughs> looking back, of course. Right. Not in the moment. <laughs> yeah. And then um the other, the second one 
probably the the one time the one time that i labeled my stream good vibes only um i got a massive bot attack and that oh, was no. i believe the same day or like within the the same couple days as you and z got hit oh man um yeah and also to top that off when z got hit they actually were discussing like like the the bots you know air quotes um we're actually talking about like targeting fireside and that caused like mass panic in my mind because i was like oh my god what can we do to you know protect everybody else and right. make sure everybody else is aware and oh <laughs> i know you can set rules in discord to where like if somebody joins the discord there's like a time limit right yep. so because i mean if, if all of a sudden that's what we got oh, okay Okay. I'm like, all of a sudden, if like 300 people showed up out of nowhere, it's like, wait a minute now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's terrifying. Um, there was also that one time um, Crises had somebody join in from her stream. And uh, this was, I believe, before all the bot attacks. And I'm, I completely missed it. Uh, I think I was passed out. I'm not sure what, was, what I was doing. But uh, they spammed every single channel with very inappropriate uh, photos and everything. And it was a bot. It wasn't like, it was way too fast to be a person. Um, it was scripted and it was just a massive flood. Oh my God. And uh, yeah, yeah. So ever since then, like we've been putting like stricter things in place and just trying to be a little bit more vigilant. Yeah. But, and bots are wild. It's like, I, I used to say like, what even is the point of, of why people do bot attacks or stuff like that? But like, I mean, if you really think about it, it's it's for whoever is doing it so they can see they people get enjoyment out of seeing people frustrated or or yeah. anxious or just I don't know, just saying incredibly hurtful, negative things and just seeing how people react. It's like it's sad, like there's not really a better word for it than it's just sad. So a lot of people that are, you know, hurt and haven't had the uh, the adequate help their lives and to you know create negative environments for everybody else around them they they thrive off of making others hurt because that's what makes them think that it makes them feel better right and, I, and, and it sucks and for some people i mean uh, like for some people it's easy if something like that happens to just be like oh there's just trolling block out, like whatever yeah. like out of sight out of mind i don't care but for other people like like you just said i mean they can take it to heart they they might not know it's a bot attack they might think man does this person really feel that about me what what did i do and then yeah. they get lost in their head about it and and it can have like a huge effect and we just it's terrible it is we just need to be better to each other like just in everything in life like we all just need to be better humans for one another i feel like agreed i feel like if anything that's why everybody should just become a cat <laughs> <laughs> furring I, heals everything furring heals everything <laughs> i mean the fur the fur cuddles right it's where it's at yep honestly i really do feel like since i've started streaming on twitch like i it's it's been crazy the amount of connection you have with people that you've never like met in real life you know like yeah like even just something as simple as popping into someone's chat and just saying like good morning like just simple words like every time like you pop in or something i just freak out i'm like lolly's here and my neighbors are probably like who the hell is this lolly and zach and fortune that this person just <laughs> won't shut up about i feel so sorry for my neighbors it's like seven in the morning and i'm like screaming with excitement <laughs> um but like seriously just like the internet friends are real friends absolutely absolutely and and i've i've had um internet friends on and off like you know, I, I've never um, too, too many long friendships just because of like moving, and, you know, not having access to Internet. But um, I've had Internet friends since I was like 11. Yeah. And to me, they're more real than like a lot of people that I've tried to be friends with in real life oftentimes. Um, and that's mostly because, you know, I ended up getting moved around a lot in my life. And uh, I've never really had that... Um, that kind of like stationary feeling where yeah. like it's safe to make friends, you know? Um, 
and it's wild. It's wild how, you know, easily it is to fall out of touch with people. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's and like, that's, Oh, sorry. What like, you even, you know, um, with the way that people change their screen names all the time, it's even <laughs> harder to find people after, you know, like a year. <laughs> right. Do you feel like, um, you know, cause I think part of it is like, even when you leave a job, um, like you're with these people mm -hmm. you've worked with for so long, they really almost are like a second family. And then you just leave your job or move to a different city or something. And then just for a lot of people, just that relationship is gone. You know, they don't keep yeah. in touch with them. It's just poof disappeared. Um, whereas with like internet friends, you know, if I moved tomorrow, as long as I got internet, we could still chat and like keep up to date and everything. But in that sense, the freedom of it is almost, I don't know, like you said, almost more of a real friend than like an actual friend. That makes sense. Absolutely. And I guess it's, um, there's actually different types of friendship as well. Yeah. Um, there's like friendships by proximity, which is very similar to, you know, the work and the school friendships where, you know, we're, we're together all the time. Why don't we just try to get along and, you know, let's be friends eventually. Exactly. Um, and you know, you might go out to the bar with these people after work and you know, go and have some fries and stuff like that. Or, um, you might even, you know, yep. You might even invite them over for, you know, like your birthday or something. Then once you're no longer working together, well, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, your friendships of like utility where, you know, maybe one person doesn't drive and the other does. And, you know, the person that drives is a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Designated you not know, drinker, it's, right? It's yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that's different kinds. Right. Like, I guess I never thought of it like that, you know? And, and in a sense, because like it's online with friends and like developing relationships mm -hmm. online with people, you can almost like, I don't know what a better term to use aside from, I've been reading like a lot of content creation stuff and like productivity stuff, but like niche down, <laughs> if that's the term, you can like niche down your friendships into like yeah. the really, really, really friendships, you know, it, versus some of those utility people, like, some of the coworkers you might work with who, hey, we're here together. Let's just be friends, you know, yep. or the, those friends who definitely use people, you know, maybe more than they should. It's a very one-sided relationship, but with, with this, like the only thing we're gaining out of it is just time spent with each other and just having good conversations and good vibes. And like, it's so basic, but so whole and pure at the same time you know for sure and so from what i've kind of because i read a little bit about this it was like a an article that i randomly came across because you know i hate going to bed at a normal time and my <laughs> phone likes to show me articles at like 2 a.m so you know. that algorithm um yep 2 a.m sponge brain um <laughs> Basically, like internet friendships and things like that would be considered, I believe, friendships of pleasure, where all that you get is, you know, the enjoyment of hanging out with that person, getting to know them um, and spending time with them. So there isn't the utility and there isn't necessarily a proximity. Very interesting. You, you genuinely enjoy that person's presence. And that's that's to me what, you know, most of my friendships here have become. I feel like that's something that Twitch just absolutely excels at is almost using like games or whatever category you're in, whether it's like cooking or art or games or whatever, like that's like the middle ground. And it's a way yeah. of learning <laughs> like Dark Souls as an example, like I'm playing Dark Souls. Anybody who might be interested in Dark Souls will come in and then all of a sudden we're friends. Like that's where the relationship can form. That's where it can be like getting to know each other, but it has nothing to do with Dark Souls has nothing to do with your category or whatever game you're playing or whatever you're doing. It's just, it like yeah. is that middle ground that brings you together. And, you know, I feel like some people, maybe some people haven't caught on to that, that it's not about <laughs> the game or whatever you're doing. It's all about the relationships and the friendships and building that connection with people, at least for me, for at sure. least for me personally. The category uh, is very important just because it helps you find people of like mind, right? Yes, and yes. like interests. 
And then once they go beyond that category, it has to become about who you are, right? who they are. Like, do you vibe, you know? And if you vibe, then great. They're going to stick around and, you know, they're going to going to hang out if even if they vibe with just your community and not necessarily you they're still going to stick and if they don't vibe then they're just going to go find someone else and you can definitely see that with some people who like stream a very consistent game like minecraft as an example and then one day they're like you know mm -hmm. what i want to try final fantasy 14 and they and their viewership gets cut in half <laughs> or like completely disappears yep. <laughs> it's because they really were there mostly for that game and they probably haven't built much of that friendship relationship connection that just like i don't absolutely like for you and so many others like i don't care what you're playing i just want to <laughs> i just want to hang out with lolly like in you know i also i feel like i keep people on their toes a lot because i don't even know what i'm playing until about 15 <laughs> minutes until stream um unless i very specifically um decide to collaborate with people yeah but uh you know i i have multiple group chats um with different parties that i like to you know form and um i'll i'll look at them and i'll be like okay are we playing i'll be like yeah or nah like i you know i got i got this thing that i need to do and then boom split decision right there <laughs> <laughs> let's do it let's just play this why not <laughs> exactly and sometimes those decisions you know they'll determine what i'm going to be playing on mondays for the next you know a month or two yeah. or wednesdays or whatever um, and then sometimes that decision is literally for one day for that one week. And then I never touch it again. <laughs> and then sometimes and you never know. And then sometimes Square Enix drops a new Final Fantasy update. <laughs> and then it's just decided <laughs> for you. You're like, I guess I'm playing Final Fantasy today. Hell yeah. Yep. Those are the days where I'm like, okay, guys, you know, all those plans that we made out the window. We're out. Di it's done. <laughs> like I, I got to um, but the great thing about Final Fantasy XIV is it's very, um, very, very consistent. Um, their content drops, I I don't remember what the actual time is, um, but it's like every few months there's new content. Gotcha. Kinda, and then they don't just like, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> kind of just like plan it out a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to manage. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so kind of with streaming and, and Twitch and everything, have you do you have any plans for creating any kind of like other content outside of twitch maybe on like youtube or TikTok mm -hmm. or anything else so i've thought about doing more um with like the animation skills that i've been that i've been gaining um it's it's been a lot of work hours and hours of work outside of stream um but i've been tempted i'm just not sure what i want to do yet um TikTok is pretty easy it's, you know, 15 to 60 seconds of chaos most of the time. <laughs> it's the perfect way to describe it, chaos. <laughs> yep. And then um, YouTube has the new shorts. Um, the short function is actually uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Similar to TikTok. And uh, I guess, what was it? Like the Instagram stories and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise, I don't know yet. I, I feel like I have a very smooth brain when it comes to editing like i'm really good at it um and i'm really good at coming up with ideas and especially bouncing off of other people's ideas but mm -hmm. i'm not good at the hours and hours of like paying attention and i'm even worse at paying attention to my own voice. <laughs> yeah especially i mean stuff like putting a youtube video together can be a lot of work Absolutely. And it's, you know, it's always deciding, like, am I actually funny here? Should I keep this? Do I throw this away? You know, and it's it's so hard. It, like, making compilation videos and things like that, incredibly hard. And that's part of the reason, like, my husband, Stallion, uh, his, his videos are all, like, one take. Yeah. And that's insane to me. Like, the fact that he can just go and do it is, is astounding. And I just sit there and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> doing one take anything is is a skill it's versus like having something scripted out and just kind of reading from it like just being able to like jump right into it and and go for it like man mad props mad props to thallion the best stallion absolutely and um i i think that like part of it is um the the ability to kind of just wing things and stuff like that really comes from a lot of like things like D&D &D, 
yeah. where we're forced to constantly think on our feet. And I think that some of like my best moments <laughs> have been during our D&D campaign um, when it comes to winging things. Unfortunately, I can't put our D&D campaign public. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost like it's all about um, improvisation, right? Like in the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And being able to do that is one hell of a skill. Yeah, I, I'll definitely say that's, I feel like that's one thing, at least personally, I feel like that's one thing I've been slowly, very slowly, but slowly kind of getting better at is just kind of going with whatever comes in your brain at the moment, going through the filter and, and just yeah yeah just trying to go wherever the conversation may lead you um improvisation for anybody that is thinking about streaming or wants to get into streaming seriously improvisation classes or youtube video binges like improvisation is what it's all about that's that's a magic key right yep. there um or hell just go and play a DD campaign you can do them <laughs> online too it's it will help and it helps me a lot with even just like my general social anxiety like knowing that I have the right to speak up and, you know, to say my piece as like my character and stuff like that, even though it's not me, it's still like, it's a part of it. when you're role playing a character, that's, you know, you've put your heart and soul into that. Right. Right. So, Absolutely. yeah. So getting to achieve things with that character, it's, it's amazing. Um, it helps. It helps so much. I've never done a D and D campaign before. Um, I, I don't, I honestly don't think I've ever, I maybe have watched a little bit of pieces, but every time I pop in, it's like the middle of it. And I'm like, I have no yeah. idea what is going on. Honestly, one day, one day we should just, you know, get a D and D campaign together. I might even be able to do a one shot. Um, I've never DM'd before. I've only played in, uh, two different characters. I guess starred in one actually. Um, as a as a big bad evil guy, the BG. Um, <laughs> big bad evil guy. And uh, yep, the um, the uh, all the players really really loved my performance. <laughs> so I uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of myself. Hell yeah. But um, no, maybe maybe we can get like a fireside D and D one shot <laughs> oh. and i'll run you through making a character so one shot is like start to end in one go right pretty much yeah gotcha. uh, occasionally it ends up being two times um <laughs> depending on the module but yeah i don't know why the first thing i think about is like a board game like monopoly because it probably has nothing similar to that right well actually um realistically D, &D can be whatever you want it to be yeah. And um, you can actually turn it into like a, a board game of sorts. There's actually a whole lot of board games that are made after D&D. Have you ever heard of um, Betrayal? I don't think I have. And like Betrayal at House on the Hill. So there's a whole bunch, a whole bunch of tabletop games that are actually um, very similar to the D&D format. And um, they're, I believe... I believe there's copies on tabletop simulator. Ooh. Um, you, me and a couple other people could literally get together and do some stuff on tabletop simulator. And it would be very similar to the like authentic D and D experience. <laughs> Ooh, I'm, I'm intrigued. Honestly, someone was telling me a couple days ago that there's like board game, like video game versions of board games, like, like monopoly that you can just yep. play online with people. And I'm like, dude, how have I never known about this? I play Uno online, actually. What? You can do that? Yeah, there's, I there's, um, it's, it's four players and it, I think it costs like five bucks and I have Uno Flip as well. So, um, Uno Flip is like a night and day version of Uno where there's like stuff on both sides of the cards. And when someone plays a flip card, you switch the way that your hand is facing. So you play night cards instead of like the normal cards and stuff like that is so cool. Maybe we should play sometime. We totally should. We if we're gonna play, <laughs> we have to have Ryman for the Ryman reverse of emote. Course. <laughs> of course. I'm so intrigued How by that. How could we not? Honestly, I, I do feel like I definitely feel like I, I haven't been as active in the fireside community discord as I, I would like to be. <laughs> um it's so weird because like when I start streaming 
it, it's almost like this whole other person kind of comes out and then outside of streaming yeah. i'm like very 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 quiet and keep to myself so i don't know once i like pull out of the streaming zeph kind of jumping back in to anything is i don't know it just it's, it's hard like, it gets so i get so anxiety sometimes and, and nervous and even even like before the podcast i was just like i don't know why i just get like <laughs> super anxiety sometimes mm. no i i can completely understand that it's actually really funny that you mentioned that um Diada and i have been part of the same friend group for a while mm. uh like many years and we had been in discords together and we never really like talked directly to each other but he got so used to seeing me on stream where I'm like, <laughs> you know, like super hyped up and like juiced. Um, and then he came into Discord, you know, like a little while after one of my streams and I'm just sitting there working on art, just, you know, chilling with my friends. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Holly, are you okay? And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, of course I'm okay. And he's like, you just, you seem tired or something <laughs> or like sad or something and i'm like uh oh, bro i'm just chilling <laughs> i'm just chilling <laughs> and it's not that you know we're actually different people off of the screen right like when we're when we're streaming and stuff like that and we're hanging out with all these amazing people on twitch and whatever we're trying to give them our best selves realistically we're, we're trying to yeah. give them our most positive face and that's not fake it's not um it's not like disingenuous or anything like that. It's just, we're trying to give them the best of ourselves so that they feel better, right? Yeah. And when we're off, we, you know, kind of, we don't have that pressure of constantly being switched on and being like, constantly hyped. Yeah. You know, we can relax a little, we can, we can put on the pajamas, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I live in pajamas, what you talking about? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, and, and that's that's another reason that is great at being a cat because I don't need to worry about clothes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a comfortable life. It is. It is. But yeah, that, no, it's it's you know it, it's one of those things. That's very interesting. Like I guess I didn't think about it like that. Um, but you're a hundred percent true. Like when streaming, it's not that you're being disingenuous or or a mm -hmm. fake or anything. You just really are. At least, yeah, for me, like living in the moment, being as excited, like genuinely excited to hang out with friends and talk to people. And, but, and I feel that like in myself, like I am so excited for it. And then when it turns off, yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's like an adrenaline rush that just kind of like fades out, yeah. you know? So put in so much energy for, you know, hours. You, you know, you have to make sure that your face isn't doing any funny things right. <laughs> on the camera, you know? And like, it's it's not just you being excited in front of people anymore. It's, you know, you being excited while also having to pay attention to your stream, making sure that everything's working, making sure that your bots are functioning, making sure that, you know, you've, you've acknowledged everybody that's come in and you wanna make sure that everyone feels welcome. You're also watching for anybody that you might have to ban, you might have to, you know, mute and things like that. And all like during that, you're thinking like, you know, I, I need to make sure that, you know, everybody's having a good time and I need to make sure that everybody like in my space, because this is now your space, you are essentially a manager of this space. You need to make sure that everyone in that space is safe and comfortable. That's a lot of effort. That's, that's a lot of work that you're putting in all at the same time while also just getting to be really excited. You're experiencing a lot of new things while on stream. It's, it's insane. It's, it's a large amount of effort and work that people are putting in. So after that, know that that crash that's that's a good sign in a sense it's terrible it, it feels terrible you know and especially when you know you get the shakes and stuff and you're like oh my god did i you know did i do okay yeah. but the fact that you feel that way that's most important because that means that you put your all into it that is such a good way of phrasing it and thinking about it and putting it like that's <laughs> I, I i don't know what else to add that was just like 100 percent perfect um I, I that everything you said has been kind of going through my brain but as to when like i want to start <laughs> streaming the podcast live on twitch because mm -hmm. that's kind of what i want to get to is doing all this live but I'm, i i want it so much to be about like 
us and our conversation or whoever is is the guest at the moment um and i don't sure. i don't want to focus on chat but i'm like so terrified if i completely don't look at chat at all when i come back towards the end there's going to be bots everywhere and all sorts of like <laughs> hate speech or just like crazy stuff and i'm like oh no uh, but that's what we have us for the mods you know mod power and is real another thing, thing there are ways of, you know, integrating chat into a podcast and things like that, where, you know, you give people the opportunity to ask questions. Um, you can, you know, do something similar to super where you have, you know, the occasional challenge and things like yeah. that. Um, so there are ways and honestly, like the chat will either stay or go. And it's kind of just, you know, on a normal day. Right. Yeah. And if you wanted to do the podcast live, I think that you should just go for it and, you know, just see how it goes. I 100%, and like, you can, you can ignore chat, you know? <laughs> I a hundred percent agree. Um, I've actually thought about like ways of incorporating chat into the podcast. And I'm thinking of doing like the first hour and a half of just like, just us talking about, you know, you streaming kind of like what the whole process behind that. And then maybe like the last half hour kind of in bringing back chat back in to ask questions or to uh, kind of take influence or just anything I might have missed, anything they would like to ask the streamer kind of stuff. So I definitely thought about Absolutely. that. Absolutely, Those are some good suggestions. I super appreciate that. Um, of course. I guess kind of just channeling back onto the streaming side of things. Um, one question I have been asking everybody that I always love kind of hearing the different answers from is where mm -hmm. do you kind of see your channel going within the next like six to 12 months from now? Oh, I have no idea. Um, I have definitely really, um, kind of been inspired by Pappy a bit. Um, obviously I started like this VTubing business, um, before Pappy had actually even started. Um, and I didn't really know what I was doing with it. It was kind of just a way for me to not be lazy, but you know, just kind of slap something on and be like, okay, I don't have to worry too much about how I look, me. what I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, I kind of, that's why I had mentioned earlier, there's going to be a little bit more of a intentional story behind all of this. And, um, <laughs> I, I've been working on a little bit of that. I've been working on, um, creating my own animations or, you know, things like the screen transition, stuff like that. Ooh. And, um, I just, I want to kind of create my own little atmosphere similar to the way that Pappy had done it. And, you know, he's got the whole like kingdom of Fubaria thing. And I absolutely adore that. And I'm, I totally am part of it, <laughs> you know, like I, I love being with him and, you know, watching him do his thing. He, he does amazing. And so creating not, not the same thing, but my own brand that yeah. in that format is, um, is kind of a goal for me. It's a big one. It's a lofty one. Yeah. It's hard, but, uh, it's, it's really exciting. Something really cool. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing where it all goes. That is really exciting. Like. I'm sorry, everyone, if they're like, why do they keep talking about this Poppy Fubar guy? But seriously, <laughs> like, y'all need to check out Poppy. Yeah, he's he's amazing. Absolutely. Um, he everything you said is 100 percent true. Um, on my side, like I, I, he's inspired me in so many different ways. Like, not even like on on like the the VTubing stuff, but just like his energy, his charisma, his 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 vibe the way he just interacts with everyone he is next level and hearing all of that <laughs> gets me so excited because i i totally agree like you can you can be inspired by somebody's like the base format of what they do and completely take the characters out of it take the the whole story out of it and put your own stories and own character in so i'm really absolutely i'm excited um anything in particular from poppy you think you're kind of drawing a little bit of influence from like in terms anything you'd want to share yeah. definitely don't have to if you don't want so, to of i'm not 100 percent sure um i do know that he's actually going to be releasing a comic when uh when he finally hits partner yeah what he, uh, he, yeah he has full plans on releasing like a basically like a webtoon comic type thing 
um, all about him and and his background, his story, and uh, oh him and Margie. God. And I'm in love. I'm I'm so ready. I've seen some of the of the little you know, the the little like workings of it, and yeah. I just I'm super excited for that. Um, and I was tempted, tempted to maybe do something similar in a way, but through shorts, um, mm. the animation sh shorts. So see, we'll see where that goes. Um, be cool. I feel like I've definitely been getting a lot better at all that kind of stuff. And I'm blessed and cursed with the fact that I'm able to do my own artwork because it's a lot of time and it's, yeah. you know, it's a lot of learning, right? So, and then you sit there and you're like, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to deal with going and talking to an artist and trying to explain everything. Yeah. And then like, as an artist, it's like, oh God, whenever you get a lot of feedback, it's great. <laughs> It's great, but sometimes it gets really overwhelming, and I know that I would be that overwhelming type. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Do you? Um, so, I, that makes me think about when I've like talked to my emote artist, because because yeah, sometimes the emotes are just like perfect right out the gate. I'm like, don't change yep. anything. It's perfect. And other times I'm just like, <laughs> oh my god, this is not at all what I was thinking. How do I rephrase this? <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's all about how you how you like put it across too. I found actually um, this is not necessarily a suggestion, but no matter how bad your drawing is, sketching something to mm -hmm. hand over to them of like an idea of like how you want the pose and like where you want like if there's a banner like where you want that banner. Mm -hmm. That is the best way. Even if it's MS Paint, like you're using the square tool, like it mm -hmm. doesn't matter, you know? It, it helps so much. One thing I did, at least with my personal emotes when sending them to my artist, was I took like screenshots of other people's mm -hmm. emotes. And I'm like, I love this angle style, but I kind of want this other screenshot emote, like the two of them kind of mashed together in this way. Um, yep, yep. So yeah, that, like if you go to an artist and you're just like i want this but you have no drawing or no screenshot of an, of an influence no idea and i think that's the same way even with like music or anything artistic like if you go to an artist absolutely of any kind and you're like i want this and you have no reference no influence it, it could be all over the map as to what you're going to get back yep like please please you if you have references you throw them at me i remember um because you know that i worked on crises emotes right yes and Isis, right? I want to tell and you, yeah, a, a couple of his. In Crises and I's DMs, there is some point, because we talk a lot, but <laughs> closer to the top, there are, I think, about 20 to 40 pictures of Izzy. Oh. Of her dog. And it's it's insanity. But all of those references and, like, you know, sending over color palettes to each other and, like, the, you know, the play designs and stuff like that, like, those things... I could not ask for a better customer. Hell it's, yeah. You know? <laughs> and now I'm looking at her like, you're not allowed to pay me for these emotes anymore. <laughs> I'm just doing them. Like, <laughs> Do but, you ever see yourself kind of going down that artist emotes kind of route for people? Eh, like opening up no. commissions? No. So I do commissions. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to do my best with them. But I feel like oftentimes... Um, there's there's a lot of pressure and when i get a lot of pressure and it's not even you know my lovely people who are commissioning me that are putting the pressure on it's me putting the pressure on myself and i'm sitting there looking at it i'm like i need you know i need this to be perfect like i'm gonna be seeing this in my own chat yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know so for me it's a lot easier to work on my own emotes because i look at that i look at me i look at the emote and then i'm like yeah that you know, that looks like me. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. I look at the emote that I've made and I look at the person and I get, I get really, really anxious about whether or not they'll be honest with me, mm. whether or not they genuinely like it. That's one of the biggest issues. And then another issue is the time. It takes me a really long time to finalize designs if, uh, if the person isn't like willing and ready to, you know, sit in Discord and you know, look at the process and be like, hey, you know, I like this, but maybe not this. Mm. Um, and then, you know, sometimes I'm waiting for, you know, two weeks uh, to a month, even right now, actually, I've been waiting for a month for responses. <laughs> uh, uh, what, so, like you sent it to them and just nothing? 
Yep. That's... And, you know, it's... The first time, it was about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, you know, they've been busy. It's no biggie. And then after it was like a month, and I'm like... <laughs> they just not see my messages and you don't want to chase them right because you don't want to look desperate right but then you know it's it's kind of like a it, like it, it feels bad and i haven't even accepted like payment for it yet because we're at the stage where it's like okay you know it's 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 half payment time yeah and nothing absolutely nothing so it, it happens like that sometimes it's happened like that before and it's just it's it's more stress than i need you know, yeah. and I'm always more than happy to do like some, you know, things that I'm genuinely interested in. Like if somebody pitches an idea, then I'll just run with it. Yeah. Um, I don't know, actually, if you'd seen. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I could actually show it to you on the screen. Ooh, I'm intrigued. Um, <laughs> I made a gift for somebody. A gift? Uh, not a gift, but like a gift, like oh, gift art. gift. Gotcha. Ooh. Yeah, so here we go. So this is my new friend, Mocha. What? Mocha is very sweet. And um, somebody had joked about getting a picture made of Mocha as like a bat, like a bat girl. Yeah. And her holding her new little like stuffed bat that she got off of Amazon. And it's a, like a little hand puppet the, that she's holding. And... You know, they just mentioned it, and I was like, I, I need to make this. Oh my goodness, that's so <laughs> adorable. That blows my mind. So, I, you know, things like that. I love working on, you know, silly little things. Um, and even right now, I'm working on, like, a D&D &D character that is not actually even being played. It's just, like, a an NPC. Yeah. Because <laughs> I got inspired, and I... It's, it's very obvious when an artist is inspired on work and it's very obvious when they aren't yeah and i feel like a lot of the time i can't find the inspiration if somebody is just kind of like a a paypal name and a comment yeah it's it's very it's it's very hard to work on things like that and it's a lot easier when you know say for example crises and i i've developed a friendship with her and like we'll we'll sit in discord and we'll chat and we'll hang out and like we'll work on it together basically and those kinds of collaborations are a much better suitable um environment for yeah. for me and my art um and i can't expect that from everybody and you know you can't trust everybody to be as respectful about that mm -hmm. I mean, at the same sense, though, being the artist, like you can absolutely control who you get to work <laughs> with. So you can you can find those, you know, people who bring that inspiration and influence out like crises and be like, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Uh, one thing that did catch my attention through that was people not being as honest as you would like them to be. I, I feel like so many of us go through that. I feel I have thought that so much since I've started streaming like there's part of me that just really wants somebody who I really trust and really admire to just like rip into me and just like rip me apart <laughs> as to what I could do better because I feel like it's so easy for us to be like oh you're doing great you're doing great you're doing great and eventually one day you're just gonna be like I just really tell me what you think please yep. please and I've actually looked into I don't know how I feel about it yet, but I've looked into like some stream coaches who give like mm -hmm. very direct feedback and I've kind of thought about maybe looking into that. Cause like, I just really want somebody to like, tell me a hundred percent unbiased, like maybe not even have a friendship with me, just straight business. Just tell me how it is. And sometimes getting that advice, like if anybody's listening to this, sometimes you're really close friends, you're really close family. Like sometimes being really honest, is the best thing you can do as long as you preface it with love you know preface Absolutely. it with love like I, I love you to pieces you don't have to listen to a single thing i'm saying but if you really want my honest opinion blank you know um, and that's something that i'm always i'm very frequently like you do you want the honest opinion <laughs> you know right <laughs> i think I've, I've said it to you twice already <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like do you want to just vent and let me listen which is fine or do you want to vent and let me give you feedback. So exactly. 
I was actually um, having... but no, it, it's one of those things where I, I very much value honesty and like openness with others. And so when I can, um, I, I definitely deal with my own anxiety and stuff about, you know, giving that honesty. So sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I might not be able to give that. In. Um, that, that moment might just be a little bit too much at that time, but then, you know, later on, it, it's worth sending, you know, a message saying like, Hey, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't entirely honest then. And, you know, I want to, you know, kind of get it off my chest or something like that. But anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to oh, no, no. interrupt you. What um, were you going to say? I can't remember what I was going to say, but what I was oh, no. going to say before that was, was like, I mean, I, I'll definitely say if you have any feedback for, for me or for, for anybody in Fireside or I'm all ears, like I'm an open book with all of it. So it, it, it you're hundred percent right. Like having that honest feedback and being honest with yourself when you're not being honest and, and giving that friend the, you know, the benefit of the doubt. And I, I think maybe so many of us are so scared of like hurting your friend's feelings, <laughs> you know? And it's like, absolutely. as long as the other person on the other side goes into it, like, I really want to know the feedback. Like, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Just tell me how it is. Break it down to me, you know? For sure. Um, no, that's, that's, that was really awesome to hear. Um, so on the flip side of that, what game would cost 1 billion channel points for you to play on stream, AKA the worst game that you would ever play on mm. stream. What is something that you just like, I'll never play this unless it's like a crazy amount of points. But that's really, really hard for me considering the fact that the first game that I ever played was ET for the Atari, which is in fact the worst game <laughs> in existence. I've heard. Um, and I still play video games and I still love them. I honestly feel like I would pretty much try to play anything. Lolly Fortnite. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> You're pushing it. You're pushing it. But I, I would give it a go. I like if somebody were to be like, hey, can you play Fortnite like this one time? I'd do it. Yeah, I've honestly never really played Fortnite. Is it is the game bad or is it like the community that's a little, um, a little intense or it's the community? Yeah, 100% is the community. Um, it's it's a very common issue in some of the like the Bing. fast paced online multiplayers where like you're kind of in a lobby and then out. Mm. I've heard that but, with League um, of Legends as well. Like League of Legends is really <laughs> intense. Yeah, I played League for a few years. It's yeah. it's dangerous for 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 the mental health. Oh dear. Man. Especially if you're a little bit like, um, if you have ADD or ADHD and you, you miss, you know, a couple things, if you don't have full map awareness, you're going to get called some things. Yeah. People who just take yeah. it really seriously. Too seriously. I, I'll never forget. There was this guy in my, I don't, I don't know why I th thought about this in relationship to that, but it's kind of similar. Like I'll never forget. There was this one guy in gym class and I was in seventh grade and we were playing football, like just tag football or, or whatever. And he was mm -hmm. so pissed off at all of us because we lost the game, like screaming at us. <laughs> this like 12 year old, 13 year old kid just screaming at us. Like, how could you guys lose? And I'm just like, dude, dude, it's just, it's just gym class. Chill out. Yep. Some people need that. Bro, what did you bet? <laughs> You know, like, did you bet your mother's car? Like, what's going on here? Right. Like, what's the underlying issue going on here? Um, honestly, <laughs> I, I feel like I, I kind of really, there's a big part of me that kind of really wants to play some battle royale games sometimes with a, with like every, like all of our friends and everything. Cause I feel like yep. if, it, if it's how I imagine it to be, it's kind of like the hunger games where you're just like in an arena with 20, 30, a hundred people and you just, <laughs> last person surviving wins right pretty much what do you think would be the best feel like, one um hmm, like apex hmm. i hear a lot of people really like apex so i haven't played apex myself um league of legends you can actually create custom matches oh. which can be a little bit insane so you <laughs> could you know create your own teams yeah um another thing uh you could actually create like battle arenas in minecraft mm. and things like that 
um, a lot of survival craft games, actually, you could literally build a coliseum and structure a tournament. Um, another thing would be, um, oh goodness, uh, da, 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 Fall Guys. Fall Guys is planning on creating um, the servers for, um, for like massive amounts of like, like, like the Twitch uh, communities and stuff mm. like that, being able to create servers where like an entire group, like an entire lobby can be just like this one Twitch streamers, um, like community. Stuff oh my like goodness. That. So when that comes out, I'm all over it. So I remember when the fall guys craze was just going wild on Twitch, like had taken <laughs> over Twitch, what, like August, September, kind of around then. Something like um, that yeah and i had signed up for playstation plus when it was the free game for it just for the intention of like wanting to get fall guys to play with everybody and i was two days late to it i was so bummed oh no and i was like i've I mean, still been playing it a little bit it looks so fun i like i want to buy it but i'm like it, it yeah i'm just like i want to buy it but like i bought playstation <laughs> plus for it and now i don't even get it and i'm like kind of salty about it but I definitely want to play Fall Guys with you and, and Z and, and everybody, for sure. It's a great game. So eventually, when they when they get the big lobbies, we're going to have, you know, community nights of, like, drinking a little bit of apple juice and <laughs> apple juice for the getting win. deep into the, into the <laughs> Fall Guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hell to the yeah. Um, so another question I was kind of wanting to ask is, what do you think has helped you the most since you've started streaming? Um, like at least it could be completely whatever just like is there any one thing you think that's been the biggest help since you started streaming mm. i honestly i feel like the relationships that i've created with a few people that i've met like um the uh there's also tetracide i don't think that you um but there are just some amazing friends that i've made on twitch that actually have a lot of just world knowledge of, you know, how OBS and Streamlabs work and um, all those little add-ons and stuff like that. And they've kind of just, they've been an immense boon, I guess, of just, you know, that, like it, they are a fount of knowledge where I can just go to them and be like, hey, I have this wacky idea. And then they're like, oh, here you go. Here you go, little one. This is, <laughs> this is how you do it. And I'm like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I feel that same way about um, King Fink. King is yep. just like next level creativity. Um, Ziada as well. Like Ziada, like I've, I've asked Ziada quite a few questions and just always has an answer. I don't know if he's just using Google at the same time and like typing it in and copying, pasting, but like Ziada's, and Ziada's next level smart. Like, He's a big nerd. <laughs> I, I was I was watching the Super Mergentroid um like after hours party show with him a little bit um before we started the podcast and oh I love Z. I love Z. Absolutely. God is just amazing sauce. Would do you think kind of stemming from that, has there been one I guess kind of not but like another question is like who's been your biggest influence? since you started streaming if you had to pick like one big hmm. influence that's kind of been the catapult for for everything lolly any one person come to mind honestly probably pappy yeah. <laughs> i was thinking i'm like it's gonna be pappy he, it's, it's gotta be like he he helped me realize that you know i can just be comfortable being myself that was that was the biggest thing and I was already, you know, pretty cozy with, you know, who I was and I was ready to hop out there and just be my crazy self. Um, but he definitely cemented it. Yeah. I, I finding that person who just really sparks that creativity, uh, you know, is, is so powerful. Um, Bobby's definitely been like a big influence for me as well. I, I, but yeah, when you find that person who you're just like, this is it. I want to do something like this. Like when, whenever that light bulb moment goes off, <laughs> oh, you just need to like hold that person close and never let them go for sure. Absolutely. Um, here's one. If you could time travel and go in the past and tell your day one streaming self, one solid piece of advice, what would you tell yourself? Hmm. Don't sweat. 
(laughs) (laughs) impossible while streaming (laughs) honestly honestly but um actually my uh my husband actually looked at me when i wanted to stream and you know i told him like i I want all these things before i start like my my setup has to be perfect um and he looked at me and he said you you don't need all these things and your setup doesn't need to be perfect you are literally using it as an excuse to postpone it you're using it as an excuse not to do the thing and not to commit to it and honestly you should just do it just get in there because you know nobody's really going to care you know you you don't need an amazing microphone your microphone sounds fine don't worry they can you know they can hear you all you need to do is set filters set your volume make sure that your game you know volume isn't showing you know on the bars like above your above your voice make sure your voice is you know 20 decibels higher at least <laughs> stuff like that you know and like you don't need this crazy lighting you don't even need a webcam you don't even need it. Just just be yourself. Hop on there and just goof around. That is great that. advice. Um, I think Zach kind of said something similar where just the sense of just like, don't overthink it. If you want to do something, literally just go for it with whatever you can do. Like yeah. make it happen right now and just make like make changes and adjustments over time. Make it a little bit better every day. But like if you want to stream, or you want to create YouTube content, or you want to do anything. You want to learn a new language. You want to get a new job, whatever it is, like just make it happen and just go for it. Um, Absolutely. As cliche as it sounds like, just do it. Make your dreams come true. <laughs> it's literally like the statement that everybody needs to hold on to though. Like it, it was a complete meme, you know, when Nike started pushing the whole, just do it. Yeah. And then like Shia LaBeouf with the, just do it and everything. <laughs> Like it, it was, it turned into a meme, but it, I think that actually that's one of the most important, like it's, it's easily one of the most important memes that has ever existed. <laughs> like, just do it. Just do the thing. Just do it. Honestly, as meme and funny as it sounds, like I, I, I actually put in my two weeks, two week notice for my job, um, about a week ago. So my last day at work is going to be this coming Monday. So what? I'm, yeah, I'm leaving my job of nine years. Gonna completely just, ah, it's it's crazy to say, but like just gonna completely go full time with with wanting to dive into streaming more to like really, 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 really go for it and and to focus on other stuff like the podcast and like other original YouTube content. But like when before I put in my two week notice, like the day before, I was sitting at my setup computer desk right here. And I was listening mm-hmm. to the Shia LaBeouf, like, just do it, make your dreams come true on repeat for like 30 minutes. <laughs> as crazy oh weird goodness. as it sounds, but just on repeat a million times. And I'm like, I just gotta do it. Like, I just, if I feel it in my soul. This is something I wanna do. Like, you just gotta make your dreams come true, you know? Yeah, man. Well, I'm, I- I'm sorry for the loss of job that, <laughs> you know, it, it didn't really, um, compliment what you want to do yeah. but i have faith i've got faith in you and i believe that now that you're going to have the time to dedicate to your dreams i think you're gonna do amazing i really appreciate it honestly i think by the time this episode comes out i will have left the job so i was gonna make kind of like a little mini announcement on my last day for it so <laughs> this ain't spoiling nothing for anybody yet um that's fair that's fair yeah it's 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 weird I, i've been at the same job ever since i graduated high school it was like my very first and only job i've ever had and it like it's weird because you know been there for like 10 years almost 10 years it's like nine years now and that's so crazy it's so weird feeling and i'm not good with change at all so there's like so much <laughs> like anxiety and nervousness about it but i'm just like wifey's extremely supportive of it she's you know she's still doing her thing and um yeah i just i really feel like you know if you can take the time and an effort and if you really want something like you know have have good savings have good finances and stuff you know have like a backup plan maybe have like goals yeah. and like a time frame of like i'm not gonna do this forever if it doesn't pan out but maybe like <laughs> one solid year i'm gonna give it everything i got for one year and if it works awesome if not can at least go get another job and say I tried my hardest, but absolutely. 
sometimes having those backup plans are <laughs> are pretty damn important. <laughs> um, the old uh, don't quit your day job saying or whatever. Right, right. <laughs> I'm quitting my day job. I'm going to start day trading Dogecoin. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. I, have, no. I have some. I, uh, I got faith in you, man. I really do appreciate it, honestly. Like none of this, I, I really feel like none of this would be possible on my end, on your end, on all of our ends, like without just the constant support from one another and and having your friends say, you know, just go for it, live your best life. Just be, just be happy no matter what, like be happy. Absolutely. Whether that's streaming or making content or working your job or just be happy. You know, we really only do live once and just make the best of it. I've got a little saying and it's i'm here for a good time not a long time yes <laughs> yes i will cheers to so, that my friend <laughs> you just you just gotta make sure that you're enjoying what you do and you know there are times when things are hard and you've gotta you know slog through something and you know that's part of life but if, if that's if that's your every single day and yeah. if that you know it continues for longer than a couple weeks you know you start feeling your mental health slipping like that and you know you just don't feel like you're really achieving what you want to in your life it's time to you know put your boots on and get walking yeah I, I guess when wifey and I had that conversation it was like I'm just tired of both of us coming home from because she actually works at the exact same company um yeah yeah I was like I'm just sick and tired of coming home every night and just spending like our one and a half hours we have before bedtime like just having depressive conversations about how much we hate our jobs like every single night it's always something new and i'm like yeah I'm just we got to get out of this like we got to be happy and you know we just just got to be happy we we don't have enough time in life to just spend so much <laughs> of it depressed and negative and just follow your dreams you know exactly and think of the puppies too like you know if you're not working your whole day away and then you don't come home all sad then your puppies get to spend more time with you and for them you're all that they have really so isn't it interesting we spend so much of our life working at a lot of times jobs we do not enjoy to buy stuff that we don't really get to spend much time enjoying like house and cars to impress yep. people we really don't even like that much it's like Life is so interesting, or at least this this social fabric that we've constructed is so interesting, for lack of a better word. Absolutely. Uh, I, this I, is why I'm going to be fine with driving an absolute little shitbox for an A to B car. <laughs> oh, for real? <laughs> so that I can have the money to spend on the house that I want. <laughs> Matt, Matt I, I heard that one of our, I mean, I don't want to dive too much into that or into it, but like, I heard that one of our managers we worked for said when they got like when you get promoted, you need to buy yourself a brand new shiny fancy car. So you Hilarious. can so you can enjoy that promotion that you just got. And mm -mm. and in the in my head, I'm like, you are literally locking yourself into such an expensive payment and just forcing like putting shackles on your wrist, forcing yourself to have to continue working. And it, exactly. Yeah. Buy the buy the the car that gets the A to B. Buy the smaller house than everybody else around you and and have financial freedom. Absolutely. Yep. Financial Absolutely. freedom. Absolutely. I love that. This is my favorite thing about doing the podcast and talking to people is we talk about streaming and then all of a sudden we're talking about <laughs> houses and cars and stuff. Um that's my favorite. Okay. Topics go zoom. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, that's absolutely kind of what I wanted out of all of this though is is like mostly to get to know you and, and the guest, but also just to talk about literally whatever. Like, I don't know. I feel like there's so much more to us individually than just this streamer persona. You know, there's like a whole nother person with thoughts on just everything, you know? Absolutely. Cause like I said, we're, we're only ever showing our best self and you don't get to, you don't get to see too much behind that. Right. Otherwise. Oh man. Could you imagine if we had like a whole open conversation with a ton of people about like super crazy topics like capitalism and oh boy <laughs> oh man it, it happens it actually happens in my chat sometimes um yeah. 
I don't tend to uh, I don't I don't tend to shy away from most topics just because my brain doesn't immediately hit the uh, hey we should probably stop talking about this <laughs> filter filter <laughs> <laughs> yeah I I don't uh, I don't think about that until like it's too late and then I don't also want to be the person that's like you know I'll throw my two cents in and then not like not let anybody else you know give their two cents right 100%. it's so hard it's so hard but I, I, uh, I I'm pretty blessed my community that tends to hang out for those conversations. We're all pretty level-headed. Even if somebody doesn't agree, like we like to understand each other. Yeah. So I am, I am blessed. I think that's a huge, huge problem in our like current modern day society is like everybody wants to talk, but no, so many people do not want to listen or at least just understand where the person's coming from, whether you super disagree or agree, like just I feel like that's something I've gotten a lot better at as I've gotten older is is not like you're mm -hmm. not right or wrong, but you're just it's like trying to understand where they come from. Um, Absolutely. And I was actually, um, do you know who this stream he's do you know who the streamer YouTuber is called Devin Nash by any chance? Sounds familiar. He does a lot of um, like business and um, content creation, kind of like business talk stuff. But he he mm -hmm. works with a lot of like the really top like top hundred top thousand Twitch streamers and like does like interviews and stuff with them and just kind of talks about their philosophy and like kind of like this except maybe a little bit pro more professional in a little bit sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one thing he was talking about a couple weeks ago that like really grabbed my attention was the sense of if you do dive into those very debated very hot topics like politics or religion or like if you do open that up. Sometimes that will definitely turn away some people, but the people who do stay, like you're kind of niching down your audience a little bit harder, but the people who do stay usually stay and get like a stronger connection to you, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, nobody wants to build an echo chamber on purpose either. Right. So like for um, me, I'm really Facebook. lucky to, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I've been trying to just delete my Facebook, but uh, I can't because of family, family and family is the reason I want to delete it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I, I think I've been really blessed with making a lot of friends that have a lot of different outlooks mm -hmm. and um, being able to understand each other and even, you know, changing some of each other's outlooks on certain things, you know, and getting a better grasp on perhaps why you know people might act a certain way if they've been affected by something. Yeah. I just, um, just because of the way that, you know, I tend to ask questions during some of these you know, conversations when I'm comfortable with a person, it, uh, has really helped, um, with, you know, growth in general, like emotional maturity and things like that. Um, it's, it's wild that even just Twitch, you know, gives us that opportunity. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Do you kind of feel a sense? that like the older you get and the more you know the more you start to realize you don't know anything oh it's always been that way <laughs> <laughs> it's like i've always been painfully aware of what i don't know you're, you're like i was thinking just know everything oh man uh, yeah the older i get them it's weird because i i remember i had my manager my one of my very first managers when i was like 20 years old and he's like he was he was like 35 at the time i think around then and he's like you know, when I think back when I was 20, I just barely even recognize myself. Like, I don't know anything. You know, I think I'm on top of the world and it's just not the case now. And I was all cocky, like, oh, I'm making good money. I got all my bills paid. I, I, I'm on top. Like, I know everything that I need to know. And now looking back, I'm just like, you little dumb. <laughs> You don't know. You know nothing, Jon Snow. You don't. You know nothing. Right, right. And it's like the more you know, <laughs> the more you realize you don't know. It's this weird conundrum, exactly. but it's so true. Um, so I guess kind oh of. Oh goodness. I guess kind of stemming off of that. Well, actually, one question I did want to make sure I asked. I don't want to miss. Um, I think this one's a really good one. What is one myth about the VTubing community, or even like the streaming niche community? that you would love to debunk? Like a myth that you think is mm. worth debunking, if you have one. Probably the fact that a lot of people view Twitch as an extremely competitive space. Mm. 
genuinely believe like competition is healthy by by like all means it's really great to have competition but there are different kinds of competition where there's the toxic kind where you know you're going to berate and bully the other people and yeah. um you know cre create a very hostile environment and then there's you know the friendly competition like um literally you know things like uh, i think it was like ludwig and ninja um <laughs> I don't know if you heard about Ludwig's yes. subathon that's been going on. Yeah. So that ended. <laughs> 31 days. <laughs> and he beat Ninja's record. Yeah. Yeah. That is healthy competition. But when it comes down to us, like, smaller streamers, because, you know, we're, we're still pretty small. We're still relatively small. And that's not to minimize our efforts, but between some people that I've met that are, you know, around the same size as us, they get very... Um, I guess the only way to like aggressive categorize it is cutthroat. Yeah, like mm -hmm. aggressive, and there's no reason for it. You know, like yeah. we're we're all in the same boat. We all we all have the same you know technical issues, or maybe some of us have different technical issues. The other you know, has their strengths, and in those kinds of things, I feel like you know we should be be helping each other, and we should be working. Together. Like this is it. It can definitely be a competitive sport, but there's definitely teams in competitive sports. You know. And as streamers, realistically, I think that we're all kind of a team. If we don't even know that the other exists, you know, we're we're on the same side. Yes. No, I thought we all have right. we all have great things to offer each other, right? So it's kind of like that's just one of those things. We should focus on making the pie bigger for the world, like mm -hmm. the world to know what Twitch is, instead of just trying to take each other's slice of the pie. Yep, exactly. I totally agree. And and I, that rings, that whole statement rings even true being a part of the fireside community with you. Um, like just wanting just the fireside community to grow bigger, to more and more people to come in, more and more people to meet everybody. Um, no, I think that's, that's, that's great. I think there is definitely some competition on Twitch that is <laughs> very questionable. And I'm just like, you, you don't have to do it that way, but exactly right. But uh, that's been something, um, yeah, that's been something that I've really been not like struggling with, but just like something that I guess has changed my opinion, like over time with streaming is in the very beginning, mm -hmm. I'm sure all of us kind of go through some of that imposter syndrome a little bit where you're like, yep. yeah, you just like question yourself so much. You get lost in your head. You're just like, what are these people doing that are growing and I'm not doing and yeah, it's so important to try to get out of that and just like just focus on being the best version of you possible, your best strengths yep. possible and bring the best that you have. Um, and when you're doing your best, you're like, is this even really me? Like, yeah. you know, am I lying to all of these people? Why do all these people like me? They don't even know who I yeah. am, you know? Right. Oh, my goodness. And then actually another another myth. Um, with with Twitch is one of those like one of the things that actually really pisses me off because I've had a few friends actually um, comment to me about these things. They have mentioned that women just do better on Twitch in general. Oh yeah. And yeah, so there's a lot of people that actually believe that um, women get a lot more viewers, a lot more income, and things like that through Twitch. And I've seen women that you know they bust their ass and they get nothing mm -hmm. even even you know what people have been calling titty streamers which there's literally nothing wrong with you know them doing their thing for some of us myself included you can't put them away <laughs> <laughs> we can wear a turtleneck and they're out there you know right. um so like even even people with you know these great chests they they don't get the same um, attention as you know, a lot of other people who have also put a lot of work into their stream and you know a, I, a lot of women that we know like fortune and crises myself um pajama princess daisy daisy reapers fox a whole bunch of amazing ladies that have been you know power on the communities they yeah absolutely we've been you know going around networking almost every hour of the day. Like we're we're always going there to support our other friends. Our other friends see that, our friends support us. Our friends' communities see that, they support us. And you know, all of our communities start becoming one. And that's not even just like, 
even scratch the surface on what we do outside of, you know, actually like networking and talking to people and hanging out and, you know, modding for other communities as well. Um, you know, like there's a lot of work that goes into our emotes. There's a lot of work that goes into our overlays, all of the little, the fun things that people can stream. It's like, there's so much work behind it. And it's not just because, you know, female. Yeah. Actually, statistically, the the top like percentage, the top percentile of Twitch is, is still men. Mm -hmm. Very true. You know, like the people that are doing the best are all dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Where are they getting this idea, you know? I think I saw a couple days ago that like of the top, I think it was 100 streamers on YouTube and Twitch combined, like who make the most income. Um, I think it was like Valkyrie. She was the top female streamer and she was like mm -hmm. number 60 something like 65, yeah. um, which exactly. is like <laughs> super it's mind blowing. Crazy. So I, I guess that's a whole interesting topic in and of itself. Um, how do you feel about like trying to think the best way to, to phrase it because you are a hundred percent right like gender has absolutely nothing to do with success or failure when it comes to, to streaming to anything like it's all about the effort and the hard work that you put into it do you think mm -hmm. do you think on twitch because there's definitely some people who it almost seems they're very flirtatious on stream they're very sec. I don't want to say sexual, but like, I mean, so sometimes some of these hot tub streams we've all seen are like, what? Like, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like it, they, they should be streaming on, um, like only fans and things yeah. like that. But at the same time, it's one of those social things. Mm -hmm. Like you see a whole bunch of people hanging out in a hot tub and, you know, during the pandemic, that's not something that a lot of us get to do. Right. True. So streaming that it, it does actually kind of give some people like that awesome, you know, vibe. Yeah. And I, like a lot of people will miss getting to do that with their friends. So that's something like this is totally like a very wholesome, you know, like look to it. There are yeah. there are very frequently suggestive things that go on in those streams. <laughs> yeah. And one thing but that's actually that's an attractive aspect. One thing that's very frustrating i'd say on the twitch side is some of the inconsistencies with twitch where it seems like mm, some very mm -hmm. top streamers can do some very questionable stuff and get away with it and then somebody yeah. in the 100 viewer tier or the 50 viewer tier or, or just like just anybody lower can do this exact same thing and then get instant banned and maybe not Absolutely. even get much communication as to exactly why or like well why did i get banned but you know, pick any top streamer did, did the mm -hmm. same thing and didn't get it. Um, no, I, I completely it's favoritism. It is. And I mean, like part of me is like, it's a business. Like it's really that top 0.1% that makes 99.9% .9 of the money for the company, but like the fairness of it, like, and I know life isn't fair, but like, you know, I don't know. I, I'm so mixed on it. Yeah. It's a, yeah. I genuinely believe that as streamers, especially affiliates, because, um, you know, partners are, they get their own whole thing, but especially affiliates, when we get bans, when we get strikes and things like that, I think that we should genuinely be getting a full write-up on why we've received the ban or the strike, because... Totally agree. They do, they they, they literally are payroll. They, they, you know, they give us like our tax sheets and everything, we are soft employees of Twitch as an affiliate. So we should realistically get the same respect from their higher ups as we would in a proper job. And that's not to say that Twitch isn't a proper job, but just the way that they treat it is kind of what it feels like is that they're not treating us as, you know, actual soft employees. They're treating us as Hobbyists. Just random people. Hobbyists. Yeah. yeah. And you know, oh, it doesn't really matter to this person. Like, you know, the just slap on the wrist. It's fine. Right. They'll deal with it later. But for some people, it's, you know, this is their outlet. This is their creativity outlet. This is their um this is their like habit habitual thing for their mental health or something like that, right? For some people, this and is their everything. Exactly. It's it's so important for us to know what we've done wrong and in an, like a, in a regular job where it's not all online and you never see the face of your employer 
Mm. You know, you get a full write up, you get told what you've done wrong and you get told you need to fix this or else you're gone or it's just, you know, you're gone yeah. <laughs> because of this. Right. Um, <laughs> depending on what it is, but, but the, because of um, this, I, I'm it, a thorough believer yeah. of that. Yeah. And sometimes Twitch doesn't really do a good job of giving that because of this statement. It's just, you're gone. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I totally agree. And like, it doesn't need to be a public statement either. Like the stuff with Dr. Disrespect, you know, they, they like were email. very quiet about it. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to telling the person what they did wrong, it, that needs to happen because otherwise, how are they going to change their behavior? And that's yeah. another thing with, you know, government things like that like we we need to step up and discuss these things we can't just step down and run away from it because we don't agree with it because otherwise if you step down if you step away they're just going to keep doing it right you know and and now you've lessened the amount of opposition and with twitch and you know the things that have been going on like there needs to be more people voicing their opinions on you know these kinds of bands and things like that like guys we need to know what we've done wrong man otherwise i like i'm just gonna keep doing it and you're just gonna keep banning me and we're just gonna have this cycle like i i over can't fix what's wrong uh, i totally agree um do you i guess kind of stemming from that do you ever see do you see more and more people in the future maybe leaving twitch for youtube for streaming Hmm, I don't know about that. Um, I almost feel like if Mixer had held on for just, you know, like another month, if they were like, no, we're not selling, <laughs> like, you know, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it, like, we're gonna keep going. They just held on for a little bit. That DMCA issue I've had a Ooh. lot of people leaving for Mixer. Yeah. Um, I, I genuinely believe that. Do you think, cause like, I I mean, but YouTube is so much bigger than Mixer. And I mean, even Twitch, like YouTube is, is mm -hmm. probably the biggest platform of them all. I mean, maybe not in That's the- That's part of the issue. Yeah. They're like maybe a worse yeah. Twitch in some sense. Because um, they're owned by Google. Right. And Google has a lot of policies that over our, like a lot of, you know, different demographics and things like that. Um, one thing that I really do like about YouTube is the fact that they have their their copyright um, demonetization and stuff like that. And it's, you know, it's a really great system, yeah. though sometimes it's false. Sometimes it picks up, you know, little, oh, what's the word? But like little parts of, of songs that people have used in like a new song and like a remix or something like that. Or if like, you know, um, Far one superior certain arpeggio to sounds like something else. Right. Yeah, it's you know um but it, it's so youtube can be really good for that um i think their ad and it's, system it's had too. a lot of time up but oh my lord i think their ad system is so far superior to twitch's as well like twitch is so yeah. like a decade in the past with how they're doing their advertising and it's <laughs> it, it's I, i'm i'm like so anti against ads i hate ads with like my deepest passion like i will pay the premium version of everything like i have <laughs> twitch turbo and youtube premium and spotify premium like i despise ads and it's sometimes we'll go on wifey's account and she doesn't have twitch turbo and it's it you really pop into somebody's stream and just immediately are blasted with ads and it's so okay. obnoxious and or like there will be ads every like 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something and it's yeah I, and, and a lot of times the ads are just like generic ads they're not even like targeted ads which i mean some oh, def people definitely have gross yeah some it, but, but whereas with like youtube you know it can like niche down the advertisements for advertisers so it can be like if this is a streaming channel we can show streaming gear to where the audience might be interested in it. Not like, hey, this I'm talking about the new microphone I got today. Oh, here's an ad on earrings. I don't know. Although let's be real, <laughs> like the, the YouTube advertisements are way more than just like, oh, this is a streaming channel. It's, hey, you literally thought about, you know, buying this, this one particular <laughs> piece of equipment. Let me just send you three advertisements in a row. Yes. <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> when I had Facebook, Facebook was the worst at that. You would just like have a conversation with somebody, not even Google search, nothing, just literally just be talking like, 
I think I want to, this happened when I was looking at buying a new guitar. I told wifey, I'm like, I, I, <laughs> I really want to get like a new guitar. The one like right behind me and literally went on Facebook like an hour later and just got a ton of like guitar advertisements. And I'm like, I didn't Google yep. anything. How are you, how are you really telling people that you're not listening to people's <laughs> microphones? I mean, um, I had this conversation. Absolutely. This is this is actually really interesting. I had this conversation with my coworker about Facebook and all of that. And I'm like, I feel like one of two things is going on. Either they're telling the truth and they're not listening to our microphones and they just have the most advanced AI algorithms in the world that know what you want to buy before even you know what you want to buy, which is incredibly <laughs> terrifying. Or they are lying and are listening to our microphones. <laughs> And I'm like, in that sense, I kind of hope it's the second one. I mean, probably be better if they were lying to us than have this super <laughs> AI advanced, like, you don't know you want this, but you're going to want this in a week. It always makes me question just how predictable we as people are. Oh, yeah. Um, Because if, you know, they actually are not using, you know, the microphone to pick up these little things then like we're incredibly predictable people we're very predictable creatures and perhaps it has to do with you know how much time we've spent watching certain videos on our newsfeed and things like that where they might tag it with like oh this has guitar music this person might yeah. want to buy a guitar you know things like that um and predicting the things that we might want to purchase based on what we've seen um what we've clicked on and what was like what we've watched, even just like TikToks like that. The TikTok yeah. algorithm actually is absolutely terrifying. Yeah. In a yes. day, it had me down to a T <laughs> because of what I was sitting there watching like through its entirety, anything that I clicked the heart, like if I typed a comment, like it it had me down to a T. It's so scary. Um, <laughs> it kind of makes you wonder but like- Yeah, no, it's just, it, it, it really, it really does make me question how predictable we are. Cause you think that you're not, you know, when, right. when you're just like in your own bubble, you're like, nah, I'm, I'm unique. I'm cool. And then you're like looking through your advertisement and you're like, oh, oh. right. No. <laughs> kind of makes me wonder, like, I mean, just oh. with it, anything. I think I lost your voice. Hold on. Can you hear me now? How about now? Can you hear me now? My Discord muted. Oh. Um, you're going green. Oh no. Oh. You know what's happening? Mm -hmm. We're glitching out. Uh oh. You might need to restart the call if you can still hear me. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, not that. Um, can you hear me better? Hello. Hello. There we go. Now I can hear you again. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Weird technical issues, but we're back. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that was a really good point about the whole like predicting and everything. I guess it really has me thinking right now, like just anything. I mean, did I really want to learn about streaming or did it just kind of feed <laughs> me these videos and it was just like keep shoving people down this rabbit hole and then they'll buy all this fancy gear or they'll they'll spend time on this platform. And oh, that's that's a terrifying thought, actually, like how easy it is yeah, to absolutely. I don't know, is the term like herding? Kind of like sheep, just kind yeah. of like herding people. Like we're gonna push all these people over here. That's the beauty of marketing. I mean, a huge argument could be made that that is exactly what happened in the last, you know, political elections and, you know, oh, that's, I'm sure that's a whole conversation in and of itself, but like how many people yeah. could just be just persuaded by advertisements that I mean aren't even real advertisements or didn't cons mm -hmm. yeah oh there's also the different news outlets like they they show you what they want you to see right what their so, viewer base wants to see yeah absolutely so and by viewer base they actually mean the people that are paying them to you know continue <laughs> with their content right <laughs> the lobbyists and so yeah yeah so any protests, any um, any like large movements and things like that that people try to um, try to get like some exposure on, they they don't get the exposure that they need, or when they do, it's you know possibly very negative. 
Yeah. It's, you know, they, they can paint any picture how they want. And it's very easy to crop a picture to fit your narrative. So that's something I'm actually really terrified about when it comes to streaming or like just being online, like having a presence online is just mm -hmm. the cancel culture terrifies me. Um, how easy it is to just pick out a phrase and splice it together and edit it. And then all of a sudden I said something incredibly bad and I'm like, that was completely yep. taken out of context, not at all what was meant. And there is definitely a part of me that is super terrified about that. And I'm sure like just the bigger you grow as, as a content creator, influencer, streamer, whatever term you want to use, like the bigger you grow, the more that stuff could start to populate up. And I don't know. Absolutely. I'm definitely nervous for that. <laughs> See, that's that's why the uh, anonymity of the VTubing and everything like that can be a very good boon. Like you could just be someone else. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Um, I think it'd be really cool. I've thought about like having a channel point redemption or something for like being a VTube <laughs> for like five minutes or something. Um, I I'm, I'm really think it's going to be a huge just boom of it. If not even maybe like take over the majority of, of streams here in the couple years, because it, it can literally do anything. It's so open ended and I think it's really cool. I, I love it a lot. It can be expensive, though. <laughs> yeah, with face rig yeah. and and uh, does it require a lot so, of processing power? Yes, yeah. um, it's it's pretty hefty when you want to make sure that all of your, you know, details are showing up. Yeah. Um, but when you want to have custom ones, when you want it to look like you, you want to have, you know, the best stuff, um, the, it's not necessarily the gear, but the work that an artist is going to put in to, you know, create you. And for me, I'm lucky. I'm just part of face rig, easy peasy, <laughs> but I'll let you in on a little secret. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been looking at getting a proper like 3d model created. Ooh. and it'll have the same fur and everything like that but i'd have the ability to move my hands and a tail and all those things what and take a wild guess how much that'll cost me hundreds keep going 300 keep going oh my god 500 keep going you spend in ps5 prices <laughs> 800 Even more bare bare minimum thousand is about 1200 oh my god wow but i want yep <laughs> and if lolly wants so... that lolly gets it right <laughs> <laughs> yep i'm gonna be saving up for it right now my only goals are just trying to pay off my student loans but once that's no longer a worry oh boy we'll it's have, coming we'll have to change the donation panel from getting juiced to <laughs> <laughs> I love your panels, <laughs> but every time I, I see that one. I think I changed one, that recently. Oh, the juiced Didn't one? I? I don't know. I don't know if I changed it. I have to look. I've I been did. working on a whole bunch of panels. Yeah. Panels are... I'm also blind as a bat. Oh, <laughs> oh, I guess if you don't have glasses on. Can you not have glasses on and do face rig? Oh, I can. Oh. It's just easier to um, not have it on if I don't need them. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so I guess, I mean, I, I just looked over at like how long we've been talking and it's actually, wow, we've already passed two and a half, almost two and a half hours. So I guess oh. we'll just kind of, um, <laughs> kind of have a couple more questions for you before we kind of wrap everything up. Um, yeah, of course. Here's one that I love to ask. What is a question I missed that you would have asked yourself? That's what a question. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh man, I'm so bad at questions. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. You're doing, you, you have done phenomenal, honestly. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm, I'm very bad at, um, more specifically, just like formulating questions out of thin air. Mm. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm trying to think. I, f I feel like, I don't know. There's so, I, cause there's like always so many different questions it could be, but yeah. 
So here, I guess. How about I'll ask you a question? Okay. If you got any questions, I'm totally open. What is the most like, like the most, the most, like don't, don't get too inappropriate, but like <laughs> the, the most like inappropriate feeling question that you would want to ask someone. So oh. like, it's, it's not necessarily inappropriate, right? But it just doesn't quite feel like it's like a socially acceptable, like normal question that you would ask. Hmm. Ooh. Um, I would, ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, I, have one... I say that I'm not good at formulating questions and then I'm like, here you go. <laughs> I, actually, I actually have one in my mind and I'm just debating with myself if it's like, I should, you know what? What? You can cut it out later. True, true. <laughs> what are I would I would ask like, what are your feelings on? How do I how do I phrase this? What are your feelings on like, um, like drug use in terms of, in terms of it being like socially acceptable? Because it seems like our society is the society we live in is so obsessed with like telling people what drugs they can use that are socially acceptable, that are morally acceptable or whatever. But then there's these other bad ones that if you do them, you know, can like lock people up in prison and, and just like, there's such a negative stigma to it. And I'm very, very libertarian in the sense of, of drug use. And, and, and I, I think like, if, if you're going to live in a free society, you should be able to ex do whatever you want with your body. And if you yeah. want to, if you want to take something that's, I mean, I'm trying to filter how I say things, but like, I mean, if you want to do something that's like very dangerous and something that could harm you, and but you are aware of the risks and you're aware mm -hmm. of what could come of it, I think you should be totally free to do that. And I find it really odd that in our society, something like heroin or methamphetamines are so negative, but then stuff like mm -hmm. morphine and Ritalin and Adderall are so have a positive aspect to them. So yeah, I'm extremely fascinated with, with drug use and, and especially psychedelics. Like, I, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm super obsessed with talking about psychedelic experiences and stuff like that. So I guess I would throw <laughs> that on you. Like, what are your feelings when it comes to, uh, stuff like that? So to me, um, there, I don't know if you've ever heard of the, I, it's like a, an analogy or whatever, or like a study. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the rat in a cage where if I you put have. a rat in a cage and there's, there's nothing to stimulate it. There's, there's no, you know, social interaction and things like that. And you create this sort of prison cell, then, you know, the rat's going to want to, mm, it's not really rebelling, but it's, it's going to find ways of escaping. And in this case, doing drugs. Um, so they, they had like the two, the two water mm -hmm. um, things where they had a clean water and a drugged water. That drugged water will- was Coke, right? Their experience. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. And it would numb their experience and they, they overused it, they abused it. Mm -hmm. But then when you put that rat into an environment that it's stimulated and it's really it's comfortable, it's provided for, it's it's got like the emotional support that it needs from other rats and things like that. Um, it would only ever touch, you know, the drugs um, recreationally. Yeah. It's very rare. And I think that when it comes to drug use, I don't necessarily look down on people ever um, for it. And I think that there's always a reason, you know? Um, I genuinely believe that there, you know, is good in all people. It's just whether or not they're willing to be that good. So people, you know, labeling drug users and stuff like that as, as bad people, I think that they just really have a gross misunderstanding of what's really going on around them and around that person that is either afflicted with addiction or actually comfortable with just using it as a recreational thing. Um, so things like, you know, marijuana and Ritalin and Adderall get, you know, sold out of like the counter. Um, people sell their own to make a little bit of side cash um, because they can't afford, you know, yeah. certain things in their life that they need. And 
like I think that recreationally people should be able to do things like that especially when you know they know the risks and they have a safe environment to do so um but I really do feel like the world as it is um the world that has been created for us and by us um I think it facilitates the abuse and the overdosing and things like that and that's the dangerous side of the drug use you know if we were to focus on ourselves as a society as a group of people and if we were to better our environment around us and around others it would make that recreational use so much safer and it would lessen the need for us like that general escapism I completely. I don't know if agree. I just like went on a massive tangent. No, that, that, <laughs> I, I a thousand percent agree. Like I think, and I wouldn't even just box it into like drug use, but like just even it, it, like poverty anything. or yeah, like just anything. Like people, it's so easy to just look down on someone for whatever situation they're in, but you have no idea what they've been through, the life they've walked through, mm -hmm. and and yeah, I, I completely agree. I think it's so fascinating too how lobbyists and and big pharma and and you know big alcohol have just put this veil of disillusion over our entire society that you know if you yep. if you smoke marijuana you're a pothead and a loser but here drink this budweiser and and or drink this <sighs> gray goose or drink this whatever when in actuality like alcohol is probably one of the most dangerous drugs like in the entire world yeah Alcohol is and over-the-counter drugs are very frequently um, incredibly dangerous for people. Yes. Um, and birth control, one of the most pushed things on you know, women in general, um, it's actually extremely detrimental to us. Certain certain ones decrease bone density, and if you use it over yep. a year, you can, you know, have some severe bone issues. Um, there's there's lists and lists of side effects for each one, uh, increase in depression, um, increase in weight and things like that. And then, you know, we go to the doctors and we get told, well, you have to wait. Oh, you know, that's what all of your problems are coming from. It's, you, you know, you got you know, like a little extra chub there. Right. So you got to go lose weight. And then they right. prescribe you something to lose weight as well. Right. right? And big pharma just loves to keep pushing all these new medications with all these side effects and they are far more harmful most of the time than you know your local buddy down the street that's you know smoking a doobie and hanging out and just like watching his ceiling right you know and that's on his time off too <laughs> and what's so like, what's ugh. so what's so interesting too is a lot of like even on the harder drug side like the heroines and the methamphetamine stuff a lot of times what makes those drugs so incredibly dangerous is not even necessarily the opium and the heroin or mm -hmm. you know whatever's in the meth it's it's what they're cut with so a lot of times heroin do overdoses can come straight because there was like fentanyl cut with it and yeah so yeah i mean i don't know i i would love to see I don't know. I completely agree with what you're saying in the sense that like if, if we as a society wanted to help each other out and and really focus on the love and compassion and helping each other get better, that would lift everybody up. The whole rising tides lifts all boats kind of scenario. Um, exactly. And it's also crazy, too, that people can get thrown in jail next to like s killers and, and rapists mm -hmm. and, and all like just for using drugs you know when when they the worst part about it is that they make money off of these people and that's yes. why it's still criminalized yes and it's it's not even just like that they just make money off of like every every well they they do make money off everybody but they like focus mm -hmm. down on minorities and yeah it's just it's it's so heartbreaking because like at the end of all of it it's just all about money and it's so sad absolutely that, that like we just literally there's sometimes I'm at work and this is like totally like not even in the same ballpark as like some of the stuff we were just talking about but like I'll be like sitting in my car before walking into work and I like don't want to go to work I'm like why am I doing this with my life why am I spending my time doing this of everything and I just always say these words to myself dollars and cents like we're all just nope. dollars and cents to these people you know 
Just Absolutely. Dollars That's why you got to take care of yourself before giving your all, you know? Yeah. And actually, just like randomly thought about it um, because, you know, we mentioned the whole uh, jail and minorities and stuff. Uh, one of the most heartbreaking conversations I've ever had in my life uh, was with one of my best friends. And he, this was during um, all the Black Lives Matter protests after um, we had some Black Lives Matter issues in my hometown. Um, he and I kind of looked at the uh, the group in my hometown and we were like, this is disgusting. This is like the worst movie ever. Um, and he's a minority as well. But there there were a lot of controversies, yeah, controversies and things like that happening. And then finally, when everything started really going down here in America, um, he looked at me and he just went, you know, we had to fight so much for our rights not to be slaves. And yet, you know, we're still slaves, just in different ways. And that's basically what the jail system is. It's a way to turn these people back into slaves, to control them, to, you know, get very cheap labor for nothing. And, you know, he broke down, I broke down, and we got really angry. I got even more angry because I can't go to, you know, protests and things like that. Like, I couldn't, um, couldn't lend my aid, my voice, um, because of the whole, like, visa process thing. And it's just, it's one of the most heartbreaking things that, you know, we don't care for other people, flesh and blood. You know, flesh, but blood and bone are all made out of the same things that we are, right? And the only thing that's different is the opportunities that they've been given. Thousand percent. No, oh, that's I, I that's just heartbreaking to hear because it is so true. Um and I mean even on the whole like criminal jail system and aspect and everything, it's it's holds even more weight when you think about the fact that they there are so few opportunities given to people when they do leave prison and everything yeah. is set up for them to fail to have to come back again and just do it all over again like the remittance i think that's the word remittance rate for yeah. people returning to prison is like astronomically high like it's like like 60 or 70 percent like last time i checked um yeah and it's it's yeah it's it's heartbreaking um the whole jail system i mean we could we could pick any topic in, in, <laughs> in politics or american or economy or whatever to kind of dive into but like the 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 political or the jail system the prison system is just excruciatingly yeah. pa painful to think about to talk about to to look at to it's everything you said is a hundred percent true and and yeah I, you you said it all perfectly really heartbreaking um i guess oh man i'm trying Ooh, I'm, I'm trying not I'm, <laughs> right 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 no like i'm trying not to like you know burst into emotions right <laughs> i mean it's hard not to sometimes like it's hard to it just is. like look at the news every single day i mean i was reading the news today and just like depressing story after depressing story and I turned to my coworker, I'm like, you know, I kind of don't blame people who don't listen or read the news and just stay completely uninformed. Yeah. Like, of course, I, d I think everybody should stay informed. Like it's like your civic moral duty to stay informed about what's going on in the world and, and how you can help in bettering it. But like, I mean, the whole ignorance it's so is hard. It's so hard. The whole ignorance is bliss statement is so true. To, and it's, it's painful <laughs> that it's so true, you know? Yeah. And I believe it's the, like, the mental health community in general. Um, there's a, not really a saying, but, like, you have so many spoons, right? Um, and you can give so many spoons to each thing. You really need to know how many spoons you can dedicate towards looking at, you know, social media and the news and everything. Because you need to remember that, you know, not everything that you see is 100% correct, especially with a lot of news outlets. Um, they're usually biased. And another thing is to be able to allot spoons to reminding yourself that there is in fact good in the world as well, because these 
social media outlets and all the news outlets and stuff, they're all basically the manufacturing. Yep. Yeah, they're manufacturing drama yeah. and they're manufacturing the, um, the very severe, like sad stories and stuff like that, because that's, what's most likely to trigger us to sit down and you know, kind of fall into this spiral, this abyss. And it's just part of human nature. When, you know, a train wreck happens, you don't, you can't look away. Right. And that's, that's what media is. So, gotta like, allot those spoons. They're capitalizing on our psychology. I mean, that's, that's why, yeah. that's why these companies like Google and Facebook and, and Twitter, they're literally hiring the smartest people in the entire world to work on their algorithms just yep. so people stay on their platforms and consume more of it you know i mean every time marketing marketing <laughs> i mean every time you get on facebook or in like pick any social media site i mean even pick like games and stuff to an extent like yep. they are programmed to keep you on there as long as possible that's the whole youtube rabbit hole that everybody talks about going down <laughs> going down a rabbit hole it's just the algorithm the only thing it cares about is you staying on the platform. And if it's going to feed you false news or fake news or things that are very mm -hmm. controversial, things that really spike emotion in people, um, you're more likely to read it, read the comments, comment something yourself furiously. And, and just it's, they don't see it as bad, bad engagement. They just see it as engagement and that's all they care about. Exactly man I, I swear social media and even just big media like social media and big media are probably such huge cause of like the divide in this country the divide that's happening yeah. not even just in america but like around the world you see so many countries just like divisions are forming people are becoming more nationalistic people are becoming just, absolutely it's like the us versus them kind of mentality like it's not all of us mm -hmm. humans together it's you know, Americans versus these people or these people versus these people. And it's, it's so this, this is why aliens, it's exhausting. this is why aliens haven't visited us yet. They're like, all these people are fighting over like stuff, like skin color or race or things they have no control over. Once they get smart, we're and not ready to join the hive minds. That's what it is. That's totally what it is. Like we're all, we're all just <laughs> flesh and blood and bones and human beings, regardless of anything else. And once we can all figure that out and come to that conclusion, then maybe we can join a Stargate or Star Trek or something. <laughs> One day, right? One day, hopefully. I, uh, I firmly believe that you are only as strong as you treat your weakest like Link. I a thousand so. percent agree. I actually read something today that was like, I completely, I think it was on Twitter. Someone was like, I completely judge people depending how they treat customer service people when out with them. Oh my God. Yes. I'm, I'm like that's so I true. have ended so many friendships. Holy cow. Like someone you love and you're friends with, and then you go out and they're like treating the waiter like utter crap. And you're just like, yeah, I, 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 I I'm seeing a totally different you. I did not even know was there. Yep, I, I've actually, um, like, sat down, looked at a person, and called them an absolute piece of shit in front of the waiter before. Um, we actually had one experience with someone that, you know, I was really good friends with. And we went out, um, and this one time in particular, because there was a whole bunch of other things that happened with that, you know, piece of shit time that I don't think is appropriate for YouTube. Um, but this other time... They didn't tip at all on a $150 bill. And that's just theirs, not the tables. And they were offering to buy rounds for people and stuff like that. And, you know, the very, the very sweet man came out. And he gave us our, all of our um, receipts and stuff. And, you know, we all looked at it and we're like, okay. And then, you know, this guy looks at his and he's like, oh, oh no, it's so much. Like, can you guys take some of this? Cause you know, you guys drank it like uh sure okay we can take it uh but like you know you totally offered us these rounds and you were saying you were buying right um yeah so we ended up actually taking more than that off of his um tab we took about 50 dollars off and so he had a hundred dollars still on just the things that he drank him and his girl 
and he doesn't tip this person at all. We didn't realize until half of us were already out of the restaurant. I went to the bathroom and I came back after, um, after my husband was finished paying our bill. And then we looked at the receipts where, you know, it says how much tip like you're going to give. And we saw a big fat goose egg on the largest bill of the table. Everybody's already paid and um, everybody like everybody else had been like waiting outside, you know, smoking and whatever. And uh, Jonathan had been waiting for me and we were just like, we were shocked. And we ran up to the waiter and we were like, please like, you know, is there anything that we can do? Like, we don't have cash, but we want to tip you for this bill. And he was like, look, it happens so much. But I like, I left like crying. I never like, I never hung out with this guy again. Like I absolutely ghosted this man. <laughs> that is just, oh my God. For, any, oh. for anybody that doesn't know in America, like waiters and waitresses don't get paid like nearly anything. Like they literally, yeah. their whole livelihood is all based around tips and, and like it sucks to tip, but you have to tip. Mm -hmm. You have to tip. If you're going out, if you're not cooking, if you're going to go to a sit down, you just have to budget that. That is, that is part of exactly. the experience. Um, that is, that's heartbreaking. And like, even in Canada, it's actually pretty bad too. Um, it's, it's better than America. Um, I believe they get about half the minimum wage, um, a quarter to a half the minimum wage. And then they also get their tips. Uh, some places though, they do give like the full minimum wage plus the tips and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's, it's insane. The fact that, you know, people don't actually pay their waiters and waitresses, um, a, like a proper wage before even getting the tips is, is wild to me. That I, I am so against that. I, like I, I truly believe in my soul, like, like waiters and waitresses absolutely should be paid at least minimum wage plus tips um I, yeah. I have no idea i mean i have an idea how that came to be <laughs> law probably with lobbyists yeah. and you know people wanting fat paychecks at the very top um of that's course. so frustrating literally pick any issue in, in american problems <laughs> and at, it's gonna be somewhere that it has something to do with lobbyists and and money and yeah yeah, it's frustrating. It's wild. It's so frustrating. So wild. How much money controls like everything in this world. It's it's heartbreaking. Um, I guess the very kind of final question to kind of wrap everything mm -hmm. up, Lolly. Um, by the way, this has been like an absolutely outstanding conversation. Thank you for kind of going <laughs> a little bit later. And um, that one about like asking me an inappropriate or or what like kind of style question that totally caught me off guard so that was that was a lot of fun was that a good answer the whole kind of like drugs i think so i was i was like i don't know i'm, I'm not much of the i don't know i'm pretty wholesome in in certain aspects <laughs> so but i'm, I'm very cr creative and and open-minded when it comes to you know drug use and and like i said i'm super libertarian in the idea and and mm -hmm, I just think mm -hmm. like if you if we're truly free people in a free country like that also stems to whatever I can put in my body and I don't know it's weird that I can go buy a fifth of vodka and drown myself in vodka but like if I want to <laughs> yeah. if I want to smoke marijuana a plant that's naturally grown in some states I could get thrown in jail for that like stuff like that makes absolutely zero sense to me um I agree. <laughs> so I guess kind of the wrap up question for the entirety of this wonderful conversation, kind of a question that I, I've been liking to end with everybody is what does streaming mean to you, Lolly Lichen? What does streaming mean to me? Um, well, so far, so far, it has meant that I am somebody who is literally worthy of other people's time that's that's the biggest thing that i've that i've you know come to realize come to accept is the fact that i am i i'm allowed really um to take up a space and to gibber and jabber to my heart's content and that there will be people that actually want to hang out and want to listen and 
like want to converse. And I think that's, that's what streaming is to me right now. I think that's a great answer. You know, having people's time, because I mean, time is something we all have the same amount of time. We all have the same mm -hmm. amount of hours and minutes in the day. And for somebody to want to spend their invaluable time with you as a streamer and in your community and just want to share that friendship with you is something that like we can never get back our time. We can never refund our time. Yeah. So to give that invaluable asset to somebody is, is truly, truly remarkable. So that was a great answer. I really like that a lot. Um, so the very last one, where can all of our viewers and listeners connect with you online? Well, Hey, you know, there's this great fireside discord <laughs> link down in the description below. Of course. Absolutely. Um, we try to have events. Uh, I'm frequently just hanging out in the discord, doing art, playing video games with friends. Um, if you're able to join the channel, then you're always invited. <laughs> Hell yeah. I will have a um, link to the Fireside Community Discord, like I said, linked in the description below, as well as all of Lolly's other social medias like uh, Twitter, um, Twitch, Instagram, all the good places. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But seriously, thank you so much, Lolly, for your time. Um, Thank you so much for hanging out for fun conversations for all of our crazy all over the place topics that just <laughs> that's what it's all about i really do appreciate your time of course and thank you so much for inviting me to join you Zef. it's been amazing and it's been a lot of fun to kind of wrap everything up thank you all so much for watching and listening to this week's episode of the Zefcast. if you haven't done so already please be sure to smash the beautiful like button for the youtube algorithm it really does help the content and the channel out a lot, honestly. Um, and if you want to see more content creators, streamers, and podcasters in the future, uh, consider subscribing. It is absolutely free to do so, and we'll have even more upcoming content coming very shortly. Thank you again for watching. I will catch you all in the next ones. Zephyr's XP, Lolly Lycan. Have an absolutely outstanding night, my friends. Much love. Sleep well. <laughs>